call the meeting to order. It's 7.02 and I'm joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Studo, Mr. Walner, and Mrs. Gonzalez. And we'll start with the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so our first order of business tonight are the minutes, approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the June 5th, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. And Chair, and Mrs. Gonzalez said aye, right? Your audio is. I apologize, oh, but we can, we can hear you now. You might be hearing that in the back. <laughs> All right. Okay. And chair is I. So that's unanimous. And the June 9th, 2020 meeting minutes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the June 9th, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez and Manny Pelli is I. And then I think one more set of those minutes. Yep. Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 17, 2020 regular session meeting minutes as written. Second. Great. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by <clears throat> Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez <laughs> and Manu Pelli is I. And thanks, Jane, for uh, getting those back on our radar, too, by the way. It's been a bit. Okay, and our next order of business mm -hmm. is board member reports. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just that the uh, Water Wastewater Committee uh, subcommittee had met a couple of weeks ago. We're going to be meeting again this Thursday uh, to go over. Uh, information regarding the uh, chlorination treatment plant and the bids that came in which were a little bit higher than anticipated and we have our consultants looking at um, the rationale reasons why and we're considering whether or not uh, we should be recommending to the administration that they go back out to bid uh, on those after we get some more information so that'll be this thursday Oops, excuse me um, other than that nothing further madam chair great any any questions on that was it relate? I have one then. Was it related to COVID 19? That it came in higher? Well, <laughs> oh. I don't believe so, but we don't know for sure. Okay. Uh, it, it, apparently, that there's a, a lot of activity out there. Uh, some of the uh, um, bidders, which are eligible from the state list to bid, are very busy at this particular time. Um, it appears as though. Uh, Someone threw it out there and hopes it sticks. But uh, I don't think we're going to be recommending that this particular time. Okay. Yeah, but I'll let the administrator elaborate. All right. Mr. Oh, Mr. I mean, <laughs> I was just curious about that. I wasn't sure. Now, maybe they're busy with other work. Yeah, there's because no of... audio. Oh, we seem to be having an audio. <laughs> can, can anybody hear me out there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like the issue may be related to the telephone. Um, those who are called in by telephone only. Jane cannot hear us, nor can Ms. Doherty. Oh, and oh that, I telephone. thought that was Mrs. Doherty that was saying that she can't hear. Maureen, can you hear us? She's on mute now, I think. Jane, can you hear us? So it's showing me that she's speaking, but I cannot hear her. Make for short minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask her to try to log out and log back in.
Is there a problem with the audio? Maureen, I can't can hear anything at all. Maureen, can you hear us at all? So someone else I know who's on here by phone, I believe, um, just said that they can hear us. I just texted both Jane and I can keep the minutes for a little bit while Jane is dialing in if um, if need be. I just asked Ms. Doherty to do the same. She could hang up and then call back in and see if that works. I want to know where Abby is. I know. <laughs> Looks beautiful. <laughs> Harry. We're, we're hiding out in Maine away from COVID. Oh. Hiding out. Did you, hide your, did you hide your license plates before you went to the grocery store? No, I had a COVID test before we came up. So is that Maureen? Can you hear us now? Or Jane, can you hear us? Well, Phil's recording, so. He is recording. <laughs> there will be a... Phil, are we... Uh... Anyway, you can message me to confirm that we're broadcasting um, through NORCAM as well. <clears throat> Don't he's broadcasting. Okay. Okay, so we all we good to proceed. I don't think you can keep notes while you're just giving us a quick update on it. But I think, did you finish your update on why you, the bids came back the way that they did or no? <laughs> or is it, <laughs> did we forget that topic already? Uh, so I, I can respond to the, to the question just to add that you know, we're, we're being told that it may be COVID related, but we also believe that in terms of the bids, um, it may just be an issue of timing too, um, meaning that uh, folks are looking to book their work at a certain time and it may be more advantageous for us to be seeking them, uh, booking their work, um, you know, either further into or at the beginning of the next construction season. Um, we also have a situation where we have, a, you know, at least one contractor who we were expecting to bid unexpectedly does not qualify uh, because of the uh, DCAMP, DCAMP certification in place at the time the bid was put out there. So we had a number of factors that really limited the market. And uh, I, as I think we have experienced successfully in the past, when we have um, rebid, we, we tend to get more favorable results or results that were more uh, are more aligned or at least more competitive. Um, and so I think that's sort of the overwhelming consensus at this point. Um, we've had some conversations with the State Department of Environmental Protection about this, that we do not foresee any objection from them in doing so. Um, and so I, we, we feel pretty strongly that this is a direction for us to move in, particularly in light of the fact that we have a temporary interconnection that's working right now. This is for construction of a permanent facility. Um, and as we've seen, um, this, um, you know, the, the, the infrastructure in place is addressing, um, has been able to address our need. It's not quite as urgent an issue when we get outside of the irrigation season because the water demand goes way down. And as we saw last winter, we don't really you know, have a need for it. Um, for the treatment at that point. So we're, we're pretty confident that we have a strategy to move forward um, with it, but we'll probably finalize things this week. And again, our, our consultants did okay. reach out to those that did bid, uh, Madam Chair, and um, ask for input as to, you know, why they didn't submit or what they thought the uh, issues may be with the package that we had. And um, that input uh, is being taken into consideration. There may be some slight modifications to uh, uh, request for proposals that'll be put out uh, later. Okay, thank you. Anything else on your reports, Mr. O'Leary? Uh, no, I'm going to hold comment. I'm good. Thank you. You're going to wait till the end for the old and new business. Probably. <laughs> Mr. Studo. Um, Anything? Yeah, I was on the um, the CPC call, which I. I think last week or the week before. Um, by the way, thank you, Mr. O'Leary, for taking the pressure out of me to give an update about something that I'm trying to catch up on, on the wastewater. I uh, tried to take some notes, and then, it, you know, when you read your notes later, and you're like, what did I write? So yeah. it'll, we, it'll take you more than one meeting. <laughs> so um, the CBC, I mean, the main discussion was about the potential um, 
and Mr. Wallen was also on the call. It was uh, about the potential site for a retail and housing and whatever <laughs> else may be put in where the uh, the jobs lot, you know, Ocean State is there with the stop and shop land is the old one there. And it was really a discussion about what would be palatable to the community, what would make sense, you know, to a developer and just some still in the early, I wouldn't say early stages because I was just my first meeting, but more of uh, getting to somewhere where you can start presenting it to the decision makers and then finding a developer that would be open to whatever the town is looking for at that time. Uh, also, there was a discussion of whether or not we could make some modifications to Main Street from a parking situation, because I think parking was like one of the big things of where do you put it? You know, you don't want to put too much, but if you don't put enough, then you don't get this. So it was, it's, it seems to be a pretty big concern. So um, that was discussed as well. But I think at this point, and Mr. Warner, when you give your update, you can jump in if I miss something, but it seems like there's a couple of things, uh, there's a study that needs to get done, which I believe we scrapped last meeting from the warrant. However, the CPC might give their two cents of why we may be able to keep it. So it was just given that, you know, the, the best way to get what you want is to present, you know, so that may, you know, that, that was also discussed. So um, that's, um, that's what I have for now. So is there, is there, a, so the CPC is entertaining a petition for that site? Not yet, but they need to do one last, there was a study from, uh, it was on actually the warrant article that we took up, you know how we're trying to shorten the meeting, but there was uh, there was one more study they want to do based on, you know, they're still kind of finalizing how many stories, you know, some of those details before they go to the landowners and say, do you want to sell? Do you want to be part of it? What, like what you want to do? But I don't think they're, um, they're not, from what I heard, I mean, it's not like at the bidding stage. It's still more of what exactly does the town want and how they want it. And then also taking into account COVID, it kind of changes the dynamic of, you know, retail here or there base. So, yeah, I don't think they're at the point of, you know, going out tomorrow and bidding. So, okay. so is it, would you say that we should probably ask the chair to come in and explain? Because I don't think the town's actually... I identify that it wants that parcel oh so, no no they're not they're oh. not at that they're not at that point that's part of the study but i'm just saying that that's what was spitballed at the meeting now it wasn't that this is where it's going to be it's that if it is here what would it look like kind of idea unless i'm reading my notes wrong which i don't think i am so uh, and then the discussion would be that if anything ever did go there and sewer did come in, it could easily be converted. I mean, that was a main question I had. I don't know how simple of a question it was, but it seems like it wouldn't be an issue. Okay, Thank, thanks for the update. And that, anything else? Uh, no, not now. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Walner, any updates? Yeah, I'll just say on the CPC thing, it's, it's like um, there's a, the big picture is, is that, um, there's a 50,000, you know, we, we put up $50,000 for them to study um, that, that downtown area and also that package treatment plant. These are just ideas that we're working out with the consultant to come up with ideas. So we're, we're way, you know, this is way too much premature information at this point for the town. It's not even ready for anything at this point. It's just kind of in formulation and it's very similar to the goal is to have this information from the CPC at the same time we have the information from the facilities master planning commission at the same you know all these studies need to come together and then we look at it big picture so everybody's just doing their homework that's the best way to think about it and um, you know everybody's just doing the best they can with what they have for information and at some point we'll all be sitting down trying to sort all this out and see what makes sense so just to put that in, in perspective um, so, uh, uh, but Mr. Walnut, that study for that area, that whole area was, was we, I recall we did already uh, approve that. Yeah, that's, that's the study that's being utilized. And so the consultant is, is creating deliverables, right? So they're, they're creating a plan, which is what that study was intended to do, but it's not, it's not even 
close to done yet. So um, we're jumping in a little bit early to, to announce it to the town, I guess is the best way to describe it. All right. Do you have anything else to uh, thanks yeah. our uh, information on that? Looking forward to the uh, hearing from Phil Hertz tonight about the uh, rail trail. And um, and I think we'll hear from the Martins Pond people as well. And uh, I think those are the biggest things I've been working on. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, any reports? Yes. Um, we had two very successful mask events this past week. Um, Chief Stats ran a, um, a mask event with, in cooperation, I talked about it last meeting, with the um, community impact team and, and several others. Um, I helped to hand out masks that day and we managed to give out masks to 100 cars, if I'm not incorrect, and there were more than one passenger in most of them. So. And then we had to cut it short because of the weather. We were hearing thunder and decided to wrap it up. But for that short time, we did give out which was great. People were very grateful for them. And then um, I was in the company of the TA um, at the senior center with Representative Jones and Representative Wong um, and Mary Prenny and Mr. Bracey, Chief Stats, um, the Tiwanese government donated many masks. I don't remember the number. <laughs> Mike, if you probably remember the number, but there were a lot of masks that they, they donated to the senior center, um, which is great. So very, uh, very positive mask events last week. Excellent. All set? Yep. All right. We're going to, uh, and I'm all set, and that was great. Congratulations on that. We're going to move on to the COVID-19 COVID update, Mr. Gilberto. Yes, I'm sorry if I uh, appear to be distracted in the uh, video here, but I'm trying to see what's causing the issue with the, uh, the phone. And I know Jane's been able to join us through the app, so she's act been able to record the, uh, the minutes here now. Thank you, Jane. Um, in terms of the COVID-19, um, as I've mentioned in previous announcements, um, we're now uh, moving to relying on the state's data, especially with the advent of the, uh, the metrics that the state's putting out, including the white, green, yellow, red markings. Um, so last week's um, census, when it came out for uh, the case totals on the, on the state's data, um, indicated that we had seen um, an increase of three cases from 208 to 211 cases. Our average daily uh, daily incidence rate remains at 3.5, which is within the green um, the green level, um, and um, our uh, total tests administered is now up over 4,000 tests um, uh, since the beginning of the tracking took place. And we continue to monitor this information on a weekly basis, and of course, the public health nurse is monitoring the actual census itself on an ongoing. <laughs> Um, um, on, on an ongoing basis, um, and we will continue to provide any further updates. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Okay, any questions for the TA? Seeing none, we'll go to public comment. And is there anybody, if you could, by either the raise hand function or the chat function? Um, if it, there's anybody that would like to provide public comment. See, I do not see any. Do you, Mr. Gilberto? I don't see any visual hands and I do not see anything in the um, participant listing either, Madam Chair. Okay, so we can move on to the next order of business, which is the the letter to the state and federal delegation regarding the U.S. Postal Service. And this, again, was something raised by Mr. O'Leary in urging us to, to kind of take some immediate action with respect to this matter. Sorry, folks. All right, so would you like to take it away, Mr. Gilberto? I'll just give a brief introduction, which is that as a follow-up to the meeting, 
um, Mr. Walner has um, prepared a draft, which is in the uh, in the meeting packet. Um, I also included some information that was provided to me by Representative Jones um, the week before last as well, um, concerning efforts, um, what appear to be bipartisan efforts at the State House to address the issue of funding for the U.S. mail and, and the activities of the US, U.S. Postal Service. So I put a copy of that in the packet more for the board's information um, than anything else. Um, I believe that's a letter that was sent uh, about a week or so ago in. Um, but for purposes of this evening's discussion, there is a document on page 31 of the meeting packet, the main packet, that Mr. Uh, Mr. Walner had drafted. Um, I'll certainly let, let him speak to it, um, but I, I would just add that I've had some conversation with him and I, I would encourage the board to consider adding um, at least our congressional and uh, U.S. Senate delegation to the distribution. So Congressman Moulton and Senators Markey and, and Warren. Um, and certainly we can decide whether we want to include uh, state and federal administration, meaning the, the president and the governor as well. Um, so I hope that was a good introduction through you, Madam Chair. If I could, uh, if Mr. Walner wants to add anything in terms of the draft, it is his, his writing and I appreciate him getting it to us. Yeah, I'll just say, I'll just say that, you know, I don't own this at this point, so feel free to <laughs> slice, dice, tear apart. I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I want it to be good. And if we don't send it out, that's fine too. It's whatever you all decide and happy to take any suggestions. So, you know, I just put together what I thought made sense. Try not to overreach. Um, try to stay within our lane a little bit, um, but also, you know, try to anticipate the future, which even this weekend has already come up, you know, so um, uh, it's up to the board to decide what they'd like to do about it. Uh -huh. Thank you for drafting this. Um, and again, uh, we've had this in the packet. We really discussed this at length the other day, and I think we, uh, the other meeting, the se August 17th meeting, I think that um, some of the members were, I think the majority of us were in favor of sending this, and some of the members wanted to see it, which is why it's being revisited. And it does have a, a sense of urgency given the election status and the actions that actually were already taken to remove mailboxes. So um, I think at last report with the testimony, there was, those were not going to be replaced. So um, in any event, is there any uh, further discussion the members want to have on this? Mr. O'Leary? Yes, I, Rich, thank you very much for uh, taking the time and the thought that you put into it. And, uh, and there isn't anything here that I disagree with. So uh, the, the only thing is that I would recommend that we expand it to our congressional delegation. Um, the uh, Speaker of the House, the Federal Speaker of the House, the Senate Majority Leader, uh, and to the Governor, and to, uh, again, the Speaker of the House here in Massachusetts and the Senate President. And, and again, the only modification that would be required would be the next to last sentence here, uh, where you uh, basically just referenced uh, the letter that uh, Representative Jones and Speaker DeLeo uh, drafted on August 19th, and I, but I think we should reference reference our support for that letter that was that was written, so that when we send it to the congressional delegation and others, um, that may be enclosed as an enclosure too, and uh, I think we should sign it and send it off. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo, any comment? Uh, no, I'm trying to... What page is it on? Page in the 31, page. so... Yeah. Um, yeah. It looks good to me. Maybe, I mean, just the message is clear. Um, my question is, and this is for everyone, uh, when I look at Mr. DeLeo's and Jones's uh, letter, which follows it, which I did see a couple weeks ago, um again is it just to i i feel like where um i feel like the horse already left the barn on this one and we're just kind of telling them can you do it again uh, I, again I, I i'm fine with this letter it's just that i'm just looking at it that if i wrote a letter two weeks ago and then i got another letter saying hey can you write a letter about that i'd say i just did so i, I that's my question like are we Meaning this would have been great when Mr. O'Leary first, you, you know, before we had it, like if Representative Jones and DeLeo hadn't already wrote it, I think it would have had more impact. But at this point, um, I'm assuming it goes to our congressional delegation locally first because they're going to see it kind of 
or I don't even know. I, I don't I don't know how the process works, but if they already have uh, petitioned, and I feel here they they hit all our delegation at the federal level. I mean, if if we think it's going to do something, I, I don't think it can hurt. But I, I'm just not seeing how. You know, I, I feel like it, it's already been written by people higher up in the political food chain. So I don't see how us putting another one together is going to do much. So you, in other words, are trying to say that we would stand in support of um, and urging the same as the previous letter and, and we're aligned with the request that's been made in the other letter. So in yeah, other words, I... where it's, it's more of a letter of support, you know, in alignment with the other letter, so yeah, because I, I you think can, it's, you, it, you could certainly modify the language to state that so that just it doesn't go unsaid by the board because the board wants to stand in support of any measure taken to prevent it. Correct. I mean, you you put it better than me. I'm the, you got a few more words, but but that's exactly it. Because when I read the two letters, I think in different ways, Mr. Walner and. Uh, Mr. DeLeo and Jones are hitting the same point. They're just putting it a different, different saying. They're just using different way to do it. So maybe, maybe that's the best thing to do. And again, I'm, I don't mind the letter by Mr. Walner. I just feel that at this point, if I received it, I'd say I'd come back and reply, "Did you see my August 19th letter?" So well, I just feel he like he references it in his letter. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, no. but. I mean, so, but either so way, maybe I think we'll, we could just modify it, Mr. Studo, to say that we, um, you know, we're aligned with the uh, position taken in that, in the letter, in the letter that was sent August 19th. And we also stand in support and urge that, you know, any action in their authority be taken. And the rest of what, Mr. I think Mr. Walnuts is actually different to the same points, but very differently worded. So. Um, that uh, I think it's I think it would be beneficial for us to send it is if you if would that make you comfortable making those modifications just just say we're aligned with the we're in alignment with the pre you know the previous communication yeah that that would yeah because it gets of my point of more of you know we're not trying to cut your legs off with our letter we just wanted to add our two cents yeah, definitely. No. Okay. So, Mr. Um, I think Mr. O'Leary is going to wordsmith for us. Go ahead, Mr. No, O'Leary. I, I'm not going to not going to wordsmith because you know I, I think what's been proposed here by Rich is is worded a little bit differently. It includes much of what was in uh, the letter that um, Representative Jones and Speaker DeLeo put together, and that's important. But I think one thing that <clears throat> I think is important, um, Vincenzo, is that you know we can say you know you know. We too, we're with you, you know, we're with you too. But again, this is from the grassroots level. And yeah, they're, they're a little bit higher up and they've sent this up and that's, well, and again, I don't know how many people, I don't know how many, that letter that was sent, that we saw, was sent to other representatives in the House of Representatives to sign on. And I don't know how many signed on and how many didn't, if the letter was actually sent out yet or not, I'm not sure. Um, but that being said, you know, I think what Rich has proposed here says it a little bit differently and again, makes the point. It also puts them on notice too that we want them to remain diligent on the issue, you know? And that, and by the way, you know, we know that you agree with our intentions as exhibited by your letter. So we're acknowledging that we got, got his, saw their letter. That letter was not sent to us. It was sent to their colleagues. So we acknowledge that we saw the letter that they sent to their colleagues. And you know, yeah, we're with you. You know, but we also want you to remain vigilant and again, as I suggested earlier, just in that one paragraph, you know, forward it to our delegation and whoever else we want to send it to and say, yeah, what they said, you know, we, we want we want to sign on too. And, and again, they do respond. You know, congressional people do track their correspondence. They do track who it comes from. And when they hear from the local level, that's important, even as important or even more important than hearing from the state rep. So I, I think I think Rich's proposed draft letter here is, is pretty good. And I think the acknowledging to uh, Representative Jones, again, I don't know if Senator Todd was offered the opportunity or signed on either. I haven't heard from him, so I don't know. So I think it's good that, you know, we acknowledge that what Representative Jones and Speaker DeLeo did was a good thing and encourage him to do the same thing with the uh, President of the Senate. So 
but I think it's important so, so that making able... those those two amendments of you know you know rec will will um you know recognize them maybe just echo what's in that letter and we're in alignment with that position and expanding the individual recipients of the letter too um anything Mr. Walner, I don't know if you want to add anything. Well, the only thing I'll say, you know, the most novel thing in there is that fifth paragraph. It's, you know, right now we're focused on the postal office, but what's next, you know? And already we've heard about the intelligence. Uh, DNI, I think, is the intelligence thing. They're going to stop reporting, you know, they're going to stop getting briefs in the White House about, um, you know, threats from Russia and Iran and places like that, and they're going to do it in writing, which is a whole different experience. So, I'm anticipating there's more than the post office. And that fifth paragraph, you know, if anything, that should be bolded because, um, you know, I think there's more coming down the pipe. And, you know, again, that's why I mentioned this weekend, here we go again, right? And there's, you know, 70 days left to go. So that's what's, it, to me, that's what's novel in this letter. You know, it, yeah, I did say it differently, but that fifth paragraph is, is uh, really compelling and we're expecting them to take action, which was the paragraph before. So I'm not, again, I'm not trying to defend it. I'm just trying to say that is the novel that, um, Thing that we're saying in this letter that we did I didn't read in in uh, the previous one. Okay, and Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, I have a completely. I, I, I am definitely more aligned with um, Mr. Studo. Um, I, I don't feel I don't feel this particular letter, and I appreciate you, Mr. Walner, drafting that up. But um, I feel that it is more than enough just to give support to the letter that's already been put out by Mr. Jones, Representative Jones. Um, that's fine if we write a letter of support for that. Um, there's a lot in here that I don't feel as strongly about. Um, and I kind of take a little offense to comments towards the president and his administration, removing mailboxes and conspiracy theories when these things were implemented long before the president, long before the postmaster, and the Obama administration actually removed mailboxes. So, you know, if we really want to do our homework, um, this goes further than conspiracy theories. And I don't feel that that letter is necessary. And I just feel the letter that Representative Jones is more to my feelings, and I would support that. That's all. Okay, I may have misunderstood you, Mr. Studio, and I apologize. So you are not in favor of sending the letter. I'm sorry, I missed. No, no, I'm in favor, but I would rather more of. I just don't want to. I think, and I agree, with Mr. O'Leary, from a you know the grassroots nature to hear our voice, but I also feel that. I think we're going to get more bang for our buck if we also help reinforce what's already going on at levels just a bit higher. And I'm not saying that I, I do agree. I'll, you know, I guess everything starts locally, but I feel that acknowledging that letter in this one here, I think would make it easier for me to support because my big thing is more on not what's coming down and Mr. Walner referenced it. Like, you know, we definitely got to defend against anything else. But my bigger thing was that something's been put in motion and with 70 days left or whatever it is before the election. And truly, if this issue has to get resolved, it should get resolved in the next 30 days tops. I think at this point, letters at the local level, I mean, the, the, the horse left the barn like weeks ago. So I think that we should definitely let our representatives know how we feel, but if they're, it, I don't know if, does it help more at least referencing that, you know, you guys at, a, at this level who are talking more to the decision makers or are closer to them, can you push it even more if you like your format better? But also let, let, let us tell you, this is what we also think and we added this on. So that's what I was saying. So it's not that, you characterized it uh, right, Ms. Manipelli. It's just more of, I don't think that, I don't know, maybe I just have more confidence than I should that at, the, at even the state congressional letter, 
being this close to election day, they got a better chance of pushing this through than, than we, than a letter from us does. Okay. Um, all right. So I think, um, I guess would, would you, would the, would, would, um, I guess would my colleagues be comfortable if if the town administrator and I slightly modified it to bring it more into alignment with you know what Mr. Studo is explaining and then send it out could we because it is a it should be voted on and one way or the other to be able to send it but I can I understand what you're saying and I believe I could I could revise it accordingly if my colleagues are comfortable with allowing me to do that would you be comfortable with that i am mr o'leary i i just uh again i don't think the, the the format of what's been proposed by mr walner needs to be modified or anything needs to be taken out of it i just if anything just uh that paragraph that starts with the right to vote just needs to be strengthened in relation to supporting what um, Representative Jones and Speaker DeLeo put in and echoing their comments also. Basically, basically giving our own thoughts and concerns and then backing up what was said to them already. So to me, I think we need to have a separate voice, not just a, yeah, me too. And again, I think it's important that uh, that we send the message. It's got to hear from the local level and I, and I think it's important. So so again, I don't know what you're, what, what's in your mind and I, I know you're, you're quite good with your pen. And, uh, and editing and, and moving things around. But uh, again, I don't know what you're proposing uh, for changes, but you know, I, I think the crux of what's being offered here um, is important. And I think uh, it's important to uh, support what Representative Jones and uh, Speaker DeLeo did. You know I mean, you know, since, since our last discussion and since that August 19th meeting, I mean, we've heard from the, the Postmaster General in congressional hearings, you know, that he's, you know, he says he's going to put things back the way they were, but he's not going to return any mailboxes. He's not going to return any sorting machines. And, you know, so some two very important uh, pieces. Uh, and again, this isn't anything that was started back in the Obama administration. This is started, you know, back about four weeks ago. You know, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it, there's nothing, there's no mention thing in here about conspiracy theories or anything else. This isn't a conspiracy. Well, even, this is actual occurrences that are taking place right now to undermine uh, people's ability to exercise their votes freely and safely, and um, you know, it's. I, I think it's important that we, that we be heard. Okay. I think I think it's important, and I just just want to remind my colleagues: we Jane's not going to be able to capture people, you know, talking over one another. So let's try to just, you know, basically <laughs> wait our turn. Um, but I think people's positions are clear, and so maybe we would be revisiting this at the next meeting because I don't think we're going to get a consensus on how it should be worded. Well, um, if there's a majority of the board that's in favor of pretty much what's been proposed here, then, you know, like every other vote, you know, it's, and again, Mr. Studer, from what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that he just wanted to uh, bolster our support for what's already, or echo what's already been written in uh, Speaker DeLeo and, and Representative Jones' letter. He did, and I offered I no to do that, with... but you did not agree with that. You, oh, no, I, you disagreed so with that, it. So no, now I think we're going to be in a. We're that's, no, be that's in only a... if we. It's, it, it's just ensuring that what's already been proposed here by Mr. Waller is also included. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm in favor. I, I don't think anyone that. said to remove anything, and okay. that's why that, okay that, that was the whole purpose of this discussion. Save for Mrs. Gonzalez. Okay, then I'm okay. It's with clear that that. that she did, she clearly stated she's in disagreement with the contents of the letter. So, um, well, yeah. say from Mrs. Gonzalez, no one is talking about removing anything other than you. So I'm a little puzzled. Well, me? I don't well, think we have a majority. If if I'm offering I'm, to revise it consistent with what Mr. Studo is saying, and you're saying no to that. So uh, and maybe I misunderstood what uh, what you were doing. Again, if you're looking to to leave what Mr. Um, Walner has suggested in it and bolster the, the support of the other one count me in I'm with you absolutely okay and Mrs. Gonzalez I don't think Mrs. Gonzalez's opinion is going to change in terms of 
voting in favor of this, but we'll take a vote on that. I don't want to speak for you, but I think you've sp eloquently spoken for yourself as to what your position is here. Thank and I don't you. I'm in support of supporting the the representative's letter. Okay, so our vote today, which I think Mr. Studo has a vote in the package. Um, if we can come to a consensus that we'll just uh, do, a, if you'll if you'll allow me to work with the TA to slightly modify it, with to be you know kind of reiterating what Mr. Studo says, then um, I'm comfortable and confident that I can do that, and I'd ask the board's permission to do that without changing the the what Mr. Walner put in there, other than that one little modification <laughs> beginning of Mr. Walner. I was I kind of hoping you. you would wordsmith it. So this is I will, yes. And sure. Uh, sure. Uh, just to be clear the town, uh I, you know, it, it might have been lost in the remarks, but I never mentioned the president's name nor did is did I mention any conspiracy theories. I just stuck to You did not. I never said that. Okay. That's what I thought I heard. So just That's what clear. I heard also. So, let's yeah. all let's all please folks, please I can see you, and I know you. This is an important issue for everybody. Thank you, but let's let let's just do one at a time. It's really tough to. It's tough. So, Mr. Walner, please. I was just. I just wanted to be clear that if people thought that's what the letter said, it didn't say that. I don't believe Leanne was saying that, but it, they might have heard that. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to clarify that that is not a letter at all. As a matter of fact, it states. This is not a party issue. This is about our right to vote. That's really what it's all about. So just want to be clear about that. And I don't think, it, Leanne, it, it might have it might have been confusing for people. That's why I'm just trying to clarify it now. And I, I know you weren't saying that, so. I wasn't, thank you. Thank okay, you. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, so, I mean, if you are going to um, wordsmith, um, the, the big difference here to me and, and the conspiracy part of it, um, I'm talking about Mr. O'Leary's board member report last week, um, mentioning the president and the administration. Um, the Mr. Jones, Representative Jones letter talks more to Congress um, needing to fund um, what needs to be done. So it's, it's not a shot at the president or the administration. It's, that's not where it goes back to. It goes to Congress needing to fund. So that's where I zone in on Mr. Representative Jones' letter. Okay, so let's, let's not get into a political debate here. I think what we're looking for is whether or not the board is interested in submitting this letter. I think we've had two amendments raised here and that includes expanding the recipients of the letter and aligning the aligning the letter with because at the time mr walner wrote it you know he did reference that letter aligning it with the position taken but without changing any of the content or the timber as as written by mr walner so if we can move on to a vote on this. I do think we have at least have a consensus on that. So let's tr let's move on before we get into debate, political debate, because we have a lot of town business that we have to take care of. So do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes. <laughs> um, so it's the one right here for the letter, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Madam Chair, I move to sign the letter to the delegation and administration regarding the U.S. Postal Service as amended, right, based on what you're going to do. Is it to allow me to sign on behalf of the board? Well, is, it, yes. are we, is the motion based on what we talked about as amended that you're going to do the re correct? Yes. Right. Okay. Is that, at, Yes. As amended by Mrs. Manipelli working her magic to reference the letter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like to write, folks. All right. Um, but uh, Rich kept it to a page, which I think is great. Okay, so I have a motion by Mr. Studo. Second. Do I, have a, do I have a second? A motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none. Mrs. Gonzalez. No. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay, thank you folks. Now we're moving on to our next order of business, which is, gentlemen, let me get there, I apologize. We're reviewing the um, auditor's report for fiscal year 2019. And that is also in our packet for this evening's meeting. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair, and with us this evening, um, via Zoom is um, the town's auditor, Dick Hingston, as well as the town's finance director, Elizabeth Rourke. And I see that finance committee members, Abigail Hurlbut and Don Kelleher are also present. I thought I saw Dan Mills as well um, at one point. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, if it's okay, Madam Chair, and then um, for the finance director, unless you have an introduction, um, in the interest of time, I'll just turn it straight over to the, uh, the auditor just to summarize his, uh, his findings. That's great. Thank you. Mr. Hingston. Hi, um, thank you again for letting me do the audit. Um, hope I hope you've all stayed healthy during all this going on. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, I saw your agenda, so I know it's packed full. So I'm just going to jump right into the management letter. First comment is bills are warrants for payment. This, this comment really has a dual purpose. It's one to inform you about the mass general law that allows you to delegate the approval of the warrant process, but more importantly, to impress upon you the importance of that approval. When we do the internal control narratives and do our internal control testings, one of the strengths of the system is that the board approves, the, board, the highest level in the internal control environment, approves the um, payroll and the, the bill warrants. So I just wanna make sure that you understand the importance of that and, and to make sure that it's, it's, it's not a cursory review and that at least one member of the board should be looking to be sure that there's an invoice or a bill that supports everything. Um, a lot of times the um, boards have been starting, been placing the reliance and their approval based on the signature of somebody else within the internal control environment. And so I think that that's not the way the approval process should go. I know it's a tedious task to have to look at each bill, but I think that that's what makes it the internal control um, environment strong for that process. Oh, feel free to ask any questions or interject or disagree with me at any time, and I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, take conversation on any of these. Um, the next comment has to do with tax foreclosures. The town's general ledger reflects a tax foreclosure outstanding list of about $418,000. There's a detailed list that supports that. Um, the $418,000 uh, on the amount in the ledger and on the list isn't the value of the property. It's the amount that was in the tax lien when it was foreclosed upon. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of process. It's a multi-page Excel list that's being, that's being kept on right now. And there's a lot of small amounts. And, and I'm sure that a lot of the parcels on there are, are landlocked parcels that, that property owners said, why am I paying taxes on this? Um, you know, nobody else can use it. Let somebody else take it and, and I won't pay this, this small amount of tax and, and, and it's still going to be my, it's still going to be usable by me. But, and there's also some land of low value. But, but I think there may be some parcels that have some value on it. And, and that would, would be beneficial in two ways. If you do find some of value and you can sell it, you get the, the value of, of the sale. And in addition, it gets added back into the tax rolls. So it's not going to be a huge difference as far as what everybody's um, tax bill is. But, you know, you might as well try to get these things back into the tax rolls and see if there's anything, any value in any of these. So that's how my recommendation to, to look at it periodically. The, the list doesn't change all that often. The, 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 there wasn't any sales uh, foreclosures in 2019. So it's not like every year you have to do a detailed review of it. But I think that periodically when there's, when there's new parcels going on, you should see if there's any value that, and that you can sell them for. Um, 
The rest of the management letter is, is really the status of the prior year findings. There was four findings in, in the prior year's management letter. And instead I, of getting into them all, I'm just going to tell you that they were all. Uh, I just took myself off video. Mr. O'Leary, we can still hear you. Okay, thank um, you. Go ahead, Mr. Hingston. Okay, there's, um, there's four comments and they were all implemented. So as auditors, that's what we like to see is like we make recommendations and, and, and Mike and Liz and the board take them under advisement and, and hopefully implement it. I mean, we, they may not always agree and if they don't agree, that's fine. They can make their own comment as to why they didn't. But in these instances, they, they agreed and all the comments got implemented. Um, so that's it on the management letter. And I'm going to be brief on the financial statements too. But um, when the financial statements, on page one of the financial statements is the opinion letter. It begins on page one. A lot of the opinion letter, which is a two-page two page letter, is, is, is um, standard language. It, it tells you what, what, what accounting standards and auditing standards we followed, what our responsibility is in an audit, and what your responsibilities are. Uh, but the first place any reader like Moody's or Standard & Poor's or somebody that's reading the financial statements, the first paragraph they look at is, is paragraph six. And that's the opinion letter. It's always in that place if it's an unmodified opinion. So what they're looking for is, is, the, is the sentence that says, uh, the financial statements fairly present. And, and when it says that, they know it, it's called an unmodified or a clean opinion. And when they see that, they, they know that they can rely on the information in the financial statements. Um, so um, the town has a clean and un un unmodified opinion on it. So um, without getting into a lot of detail on the financial statements, I just want to say, I know that this has been a really difficult time for all municipalities, both financially and otherwise. Uh, I, I do, I'm in a town hall every day and, and, and you know, talking to people every day and I know you know what the what the financial impact is, and um, and and all the other issues that are going on, but um, I I think that the town's past management has given it a leg up on this because you you have a good a strong financial position um, as of June 30th, 30, 30, uh, 30, 2019, your free cash was 3.3 million. Your general stabilization fund was 2.9 million, and you had three specific stabilization fund, which uh, was 2.7 million. So you have 8.9 million dollars in reserves, in addition to the, the 19 and a half million dollars in the sale of lot funds. So you put the town has put itself in a position to weather this, to weather uh, the financial downturn that's been occurring uh, when bond rating agencies. At Moody's and Standard & Poor's ask you about reserves. Um, they're not thinking about pandemics, but they are thinking about downturn in, in economies. And these are particular, these are just the reasons that they want to know. They want you to have reserves so that you can um, weather these types of downturns. And, and I think that the past practices have put the town in a position where they'll be able to be better than most weather this next uh, period of time. The financial statements also includes two reports in the back. They're on page 76 and 78. One's a report on internal control um, and on compliance with laws and regulations of the town as a whole. And there's also another report on internal control and compliance over federal grants, laws and regulations that guide federal grants. And both are clean reports, they're unmodified reports, and there were no findings that needed to be reported on that. Um, I'm more than happy to spend as much time as anybody wants on the financial statements, uh, but I know that you have a lot going on, and I just want to, anybody who does want to go over it more detail, they, they can give me a call or do a set up a Zoom meeting um, by yourselves or at a different time where you don't have a lot going on, and I'm happy to talk at length with you about the, the details within the financial statements. But um, does that, if anybody has any questions right now, I'm happy to answer them. Sure. All right. Uh, let's um, see. OK, Mr. Gilberto has his hand up. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, and I, I don't mean to take up the board members or, or anybody else's time, but um, Dick, thank you for that uh, quick summary of um, you know quite a bit of, quite a bit of work on your part and a, a lengthy document. Um, I just wanted to bring up the issue of the uh, the tax foreclosed land. Um, would would another alternative be to um, to transfer care custody and control from the tax title custodian to either the select board or for general government purposes? Would that satisfy your your concern on that? Well, board? these aren't tax titles. This is properties that you've already foreclosed on. You own the properties now. Sure. So. so I guess my question is, if we were to transition those properties, you know, from, you know, into to straight general municipal purposes, would that achieve your? Oh, goal? so you're saying that if, if there's a parcel that you don't want to sell, that you want to just utilize? That's correct. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it will relate to a further discussion this evening. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. That would be included in that study you're talking about, right, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, potentially, yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Okay. Mr. O'Leary, any questions? No, just as far as Dick, your first comment in relation to uh, delegating the responsibility to one member of the board to sign bill and payroll or review, uh, you know, currently everybody gets, every member of the board gets it. So are you suggesting yeah. that that works well or isn't working well or what? Well, all I'm saying is that, like, I'm thinking not, I'm not thinking payroll as much as the, the expenditure warrants. No, no, the bill, no, bill and payroll. Yeah, bill, bill warrants. Yeah. Um, are you getting every single invoice to look at? No, but we have the opportunity if we want to question it, call and question it. But well, see, but that's that. I I know, like it's like it's a tedious one. You know, there there a lot in the past. There's always been a a, a a member on the board that came in and looked at the warrant, and not just your board. Uh, this is almost everywhere that there was the one, and they were always called the pain in the neck ones because they came in and they, they made, they made they'd sit down and look at every invoice and, and they'd say, you know, what about this, what about that? And, and it was, although it was a tedious process, it was effective. And if there wasn't a bill there, so, so what you're doing by the internal control is you're making, providing assurance that someone else that's in a lower level than you is doing their job. Would it so, be? Would it be more effective or, let's see, if we want to minimize the risk to set a dollar threshold rather than looking at every little bill and payroll warrant, you know, so that you can minimize the uh, the exposure to abuse or whatever you're, you're concerned well, about? I, I guess, but, um, you know, theoretically, it's, it's like um, over time, how much can build up. So, I mean, it's better than not doing looking at bills at all but um th there's been some fraud in the uh, in, in in the fairly recent past um which is which was a trigger for for this comment not in your town but in a town that um the town administrator got a little concerned i just saw me this. too yeah yeah, <laughs> we all did. yeah. yeah. It wasn't, i mean not your town at all you know but this comment is in every single municipal audit that i do this year because of a um something that happened in a community. Okay. Which, which, which will remain named. <laughs> no, so we, well, you can probably read about those, but we, yeah, so, I'm sure we, you could. so I, I, I kind of had the same question as Mr. O'Leary did, but in terms of looking at the warrant, in other words, we see what that is, but we don't see the backup to right. the itemization that we have. However, right. we are free and I know I have, peppered the finance director with questions when I see something and I, I want to know what that is. And she's always readily available. But you're saying we need the actual paper well, copy of the bill. So what, I, what I'm telling you, the fraud risk is like, so if Dick Hingston was, was, was in a, one of the levels just below you in the finance um, and, and, and approving the warrant and you relied on me and and the, I put a bill in for myself, I put a bill in that really, I put on a warrant, but there was not a bill. Then, I mean, Dick, I could, I could perpetrate fraud because you're approving something that there wasn't a real bill on. It. And so um, I just think that that's, that's where the danger lies. 
and, and, and you know what, and it's particularly um, in areas where credit cards are used. If there's any, any type of credit cards, that's where, that's where there's a, a, a more than, a, So if I was going to do something other than look at all of them, I would look at every bill that's related to a credit card. Okay. And my question, my question to the administrator is, what do we have that's run on credit cards? The uh, the finance director can probably give a more detailed answer, but it, it's very limited. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, it was a, 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 you know to the point where when the transactions are occurring, at least um you know and out of my office you know they're communicated electronically almost real time when they happen um so very limited distribution and very limited use but i'll, I'll ask the finance director to provide the detail and, and the other thing is is that dick you, you probably recall my uh, past life here my, my retired life you know i was a, a bank examiner and, a, and an auditor yep. and um, you know so what we did is we try and minimize risk and again there, there are certain tracking capabilities in relation to uh, specific vendors that we can track by aggregate dollar amounts. So if someone were doing small dollar amounts, you know, that would fall below a threshold, um, you know, the aggregate amount within every 30 day period or three month period, you know, would then have to be tracked and it's just a programming. Um, yeah, so, so, I mean, you do have, you, I mean, the structure is, is, is set up but of the internal control process is set up well because you do have like, um, you know, like the treasurer's office is in charge of the checks and the accountant's office is in charge of it. So there is a good segregation of duties. Um, it, it, it just, there's just been a, um, actually it was, it was a couple for us in, in, in recent, in, in the last year or so, two years that have, um, where, where someone that was in a high level of, the highest, levels of internal controls was was the one that was doing it and so that's where the, the risk was was for somebody and 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 i and i'm putting this in everywhere and, and i think that you know i i don't mean that i'm not trying to point accusations at anyone because i think that you have a very very strong finance team and led by liz and you know i think they're, they're, you have you're very strong there so i'm just trying to identify risk areas when when somebody else is there you know for, for the, it's for the next person or or just to set up controls for you guys so I, again i i was not i mean i'm aware that, that there's limited use of credit cards that's why i asked the question to the administrator um because those discussions in years past in relation to whether or not we wanted to even have them floating around you yeah. know, on an as-need basis and for certain set of circumstances and it's been pretty well controlled um, the rest of it would be, again, just, you know, invoices being submitted um, below certain thresholds. And again, if we don't look at the aggregate amounts and who's getting what, but uh, again, uh, I understand where you're coming from. I just don't know about the uh, effort that needs to be put in to mitigate yeah, the no. risk. Uh, and I also understand the need for your comments, you know, across <laughs> the board. But again, you know, how applicable is it? It could be applicable to us later on if we're not vigilant about it. So, right. That's so. and that's you know I feel like I'd be remiss if I if if something happened and which which you know I don't expect and 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 I I think that I would feel remiss if something happened and I hadn't said you know like, how did that happen and that 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 is the way it happened in in one of the places and actually both of the places that that the the only person that could have caught it was the board. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Madam Chair, if you don't mind, I'll spend a little time with the town administrator and the finance director just to kick around what we have, what our exposure is, and uh, see if we need to uh, implement some sort of internal controls, uh, tighten them up a little bit. Does anybody have any other um, questions? Um, um, Mr. Walner, any questions? All set. Mrs. Gonzalez? All set. Mr. Studo. All set. Okay. Now I had I had the questions along a similar line because in your final notation you did not find any deficiencies or issues. Right. So yeah. um, I understand that. I'm actually familiar with that case and it was a 
the, the treasurer who had his own companies. He was diverting funds to his own dummy companies. So yeah, and um, there was another one where where somebody in another position was 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 doing something through yeah. through credit cards. Yeah, and it, uh, it's amazing that the yeah. scams and the schemes that are accessible even yep. in this day and age with all the oversight. So I've, I've worked on a couple for the community that I work for. So it's really? pretty amazing. We, we had a significant theft of uh, over half a million dollars years ago on um, real estate tax refund checks. So it's the it, people are creative in the ways that they abscond with the yeah. um, Funds and it is our responsibility to preserve the public fisc, of course. So yep. um, that's a. It was a great point noted, and I'm happy to see though that you you did not find any deficiencies. And this no, is no, I, I, shoring up our yep. oversight. You you do have a good set, set up. I mean, the you know the, just because the nature of the the assessors doing the billing, the collectors doing the collecting, the accountant doing the. Um, the recording and and the reconciling done every month. I mean, I mean, you have a strong setup just by the very nature of your offices and and so and 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 the people in it. So I think that you know you have a, a good finance team. Okay, that's great. All right, so we'll um, probably all like to take a a crack at you know kind of a little bit more review with the TA. Um, so we welcome that, Mr. O I'd welcome that, Mr. O'Lear. I don't think my colleagues would have an issue with it. And uh, I can plan to discuss a few things with him at my, myself, too. Um, and any of my colleagues, I mean, we have a couple of finance people uh, on the board, too, that they might be able to help with that, too. Might be able to give some of their input on it, too. Do we have... Um, any other, anything else, Mr. Hingston and Mr. Gilberto, do you have any other questions while Mr. Hingston's with us? No, nope. and seeing none, I think we appreciate the effort that you put in. Thank you for that. Thank you, Liz, for that as well. Um, and, and again, to my colleagues, Mr. Hingston has um, offered, he's made himself available if there's something more in that report, which is a pretty lengthy and uh, in-depth report, right. if there's something more that you'd like to, he's he's offered for you to just reach out directly to him on that. Mr. Gilberto, go ahead. I recognize that I said I did not have any questions, but when I just checked the chat, I saw that there is a question in there from, um, I believe a resident. Um, I'm just gonna read it. it. Just says it's a very general question, but do we know how deep the auditor questions can be on yes. that seem out of the ordinary? I'm sorry, can you say that again, the last part? Do we know how deep the auditor questions can be on expense that seems out of the ordinary? Well, we do a sample. It's not a fraud audit, so we're not testing everything. We, we do a sample, and uh, we and and if anything looks unusual in our sample, we'll we'll dig into it, and if and we scan the ledger for unusual entries too. So. Uh, we do our best with 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 what they're doing, and, and we follow the standards. So I mean, the, the, when you the probability wise, when you went in order to gain, we have um, levels of assurance that we have to have, and a certain, and we have to do, fill out forms that tell us what well as we determine how many um, items there are in the population, and we have to have like a ninety seven percent. Um, a sureal rate, and and the, the number is 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 fairly low that you have to test, you know, to 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 get that level of assurance. It's kind of like a a polling, where where they, they you have millions of people and they 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 take a poll of them, you know, a thousand people, and so we're in the same boat. We're doing sampling, but anything that looks unusual to us that we see, we we follow to the end. Okay. And Madam Chair, the uh, person who asked the question says thanks. 
and the, he also asked another question that this management report that the board receives annually that our auditor does come to speak with us about annually that is available it's a public document it's a public record and um you know it's in our it's in our packet for purposes of us reviewing it to question mr hingston so i it's it's definitely a document that you can see or have or have a copy of or uh, i don't think you post them online but they're certainly available if someone wants to look at it so they are posted online i believe through the annual report if i remember correctly so they do get posted uh, okay in that. but it's a public document and we'll provide it if anyone's asked and the person who asked the question i've given them my email address okay great thank you mr Gilberto. okay mr o'leary just stick, uh, looking forward to next year um if if at some point in time we start getting reimbursements on COVID funds how is that going to expand your scope and as far as a crossover between regular appropriations and COVID reimbursements and things of that nature? Well, well the, the, the audit guidelines have not come out yet far, but there's, um, I'm sure that there's gonna, we, we already do single audit act and, and it, it's, there's like, once you have over $750,000 in federal grants, then, then you're required to have additional testing. And that's why that second report I mentioned about the internal controls and compliance over the grant programs, that's why we have to do the, the testing to give us the ability to issue that report. So we'll, we'll be, and, and we, depending on how large they are, it, it, it tells us how many of those we have to test. We have to test at least 25% of the total expenditures that you have for federal grants. So um, last year, I think we tested two grants and, and the year before there was one grant. So we try, they, they want us to try to rotate. I'm, I'm sure that- Yes, friend. I'm sure that there'll be, the, 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 the COVID grants will be in our scope next year because uh, we've we've tested a lot of the other bigger ones in the prior two years. So, if this if these are fairly large in scope, do you, do you know how much you, you you think you're going to be getting? We hope it's a lot, but what did it say? One point two. We're looking for. Yeah, approximately. Yeah. yeah. Plus some money. So yeah. Chances here. are that will be the. You know, I, they they have things called clusters, and if and 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 sometimes. It, the past, the stimulus packages uh, in the past, they've said they've called them clusters when there was multiple grants um, that were for the same types of things. And, and, and I'm thinking that these are gonna be clusters because there's several grants right now. There's, there's an education grant and, and there's a couple others that are out there. So uh, I think that what we'll end up doing is that that will be the grant we test, our, that cluster of grants so is what the ones we will test. So I'm sure that, somehow it will get, when it's that much money, it will be in our purview of our audit. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hingston. Liz, okay. we know you're joining us. Thank you as well for all the effort. Thank you. And to your Stay team. Stay healthy, everybody. Yeah, you too, take it easy. Thank you. Bye. Okay, our next order of business is the vote to sell town on land map 78, parcels 72, 17 to 23 Verviside Drive, which is a continuation of the public meeting that we had last time on August 17th. Do you want us to read the um, publication notice again, Mr. Gilberto, or is that not necessary? Um, Madam Chair, I don't think that that's necessary. Um, I, I have followed up with town council uh, as we discussed at the last meeting and um, they did uh, affirm the statements that I made previously, which is that you know, in terms of the, um, you know, a pending application, the, uh, the GLAM calculation um, is fixed as of the date of the um, application. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's what I related the last meeting and they did confirm that um, and further provided, you know, that provided me that, um, you know, where it could become relevant might be for a future uh, application um, with regard to what the, uh, the ratios are. Um, and so, you know, having thought about the discussion that we had last week and having um, talked with town council, I do think that there's an avenue here to maybe um, address the concern, as I understand it, from the abutting resident. And that avenue could be um, um, either a lesser um, acquisition or perhaps just uh, an easement um, for purposes of the, what we know is an existing driveway. Um, 
I've not had the opportunity to discuss this with the residents and I don't believe I see them on the meeting here this evening. So my, my suspect, my, my recommendation is actually that we, um, that we actually continue the hearing to a further, um, a further agenda. Um, but I, I think in reality, the transaction we, we may be looking at may be um, a, a separate transaction that's much smaller in nature. Um, but I would like to discuss that. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm just bringing this up based upon what I understand about the request. Um, but I don't think that we should be proceeding with a vote this evening uh, on the sale because I think there's some more things to work out in terms of the desires of the abutters. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gilberto, especially given given the confirmation from the from town council with respect to divesting of that parcel. I think that's what we asked you to look at. So, um, okay, so does anyone have any comment or okay, Mr. O'Leary? Just a. Uh, this has already gone before the, the planning commission, correct? It has. It has. So it's already been got their blessing and approval. Just needs a sign so off. Their approval was for an A and R uh, to split the parcel in half. I don't believe that they um, weighed in one way or the other on the issue of whether or not the property should be sold. Okay, but but they allowed it to be split. Correct. Now, it, it, to me, if if our concern is, and I forget how big this is, what. 3,000 square feet, 4,000 square feet, very something small. like that. Small, very small. Um, for, first of all, in relation to the current application that we have in the GLAM, no impact. You know, as far as any future uh, 40B application, if we have to reply, re rely on the GLAM to, to avoid a 40B, we're not thinking about this properly or correctly, in my estimation. And we should still be uh, actively seeking to put town-owned land, some of it back on the tax rolls, particularly in instances like this, small parcels that directly abut people who need them. Um, and and I, don't I don't think we should be overly concerned about the gland. You know, I think that's the wrong way to think about it and the wrong way to be blocking 40 Bs. You know, we should be embracing affordable housing. We should be, we have a plan in place that's already been approved and approved by the state, then we should stick to that plan. And we shouldn't just be uh, not selling parcels because we're concerned about not having enough open space, you know, or under town control, which gives us a safe harbor instead of reaching the mandatory 10% threshold. So uh, to me, I don't think we should, in this particular specific case, um, people need the, need the land, um, we're retaining the other half of it. Uh, we still have access to the river there and down the street, which was one of the suggestions from the um, Conservation Commission, and maybe even the Planning Commission at the time last year when they, when they applied. So I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't move forward as quickly as possible on it. And again, as far as you know, granting them an easement as opposed to you know, selling it to them, that doesn't do us any good as far as putting any land back on the tax rolls. Okay, thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Um, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, I believe that Mr. Gilberto recommended that we table this to a later meeting. Um, so is that the consensus of my colleagues? Mr. O'Leary, you're not in favor of table. Well, yeah, but how late? How, 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 long are you gonna, how long are you gonna kick it out? You're talking the next meeting? Are you talking six months from now? Or? Um, I, I no. I, my suggestion would be to the board to um, continue it to not the next meeting, but the meeting uh, after um, Monday, September twenty eighth. <clears throat> okay. Um, and um, okay. So are we do we need a vote on that, or do you want me to just pull the members? Um, so. a, vote, a vote to continue the, the okay. hearing to Monday, September twenty eighth um, at seven. 30 p.m. would be good. Okay, so Mr. Studo, do I have a motion? <laughs> do I, I have a motion? a motion on that. I have what he said. <laughs> Ma <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, a motion to continue the hearing to September, what was the date again? September 28. 28. <clears throat> 28. <clears throat> At 7.30 p.m. At 7.30 right. p.m. Vote, vote, uh, motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. I'm fine with the 28th. 
Mrs. Aye. Mr. Walner. I'm good with that. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay. Thank you. Next order of business is the review and discussion of the October town meeting warrant articles, time, date, locations, vote recommendations, and we have Mr. Murphy joining us. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Murphy. So, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I think, and my hope is that this will be the most efficient of our conversations about town meeting scheduling yet with us all having the benefit of seeing the venue, um, the, ve the multiple venues that are available. And so, um, you know, we, we met last Wednesday, and again, as I indicated at the last meeting, we did not have the opportunity to discuss the August special town meeting until last week. Um, the, this uh, meeting included myself, the town clerk, the moderator, and um, the fire chief, police chief, and health director. I think the consensus was that while there were some challenges, um, on the field that, that, that overall um, we you know, achieved the purpose in conducting the meeting um, and that, you know, that to the extent feasible, having the meeting outside was preferable um, to, uh, to having it inside. And so kind of, I guess a long story short is that we then followed up with town council regarding the steps that we could take, particularly in light of the available dates for having a meeting. I think everybody's aware there's a, uh, a uh, uh, federal and state election that's happening in November. That election includes early voting. And um, what that effectively means is that in terms of having an outdoor meeting on a Saturday, which is what we are recommending, um, the dates that are available to us in October are October 3rd and October 10th. October 10th being the Columbus Day holiday weekend, which may or may not play into the board's determination for scheduling purposes. The weekends thereafter are either occupied with early voting or with um, preparation for um, uh, election day in November as well. And so they, uh, that will preclude the town clerk's office from being able to conduct the uh, town meeting um, on those Saturdays. Um, we talked with the health director because if, you know, for some reason we decided to go with the October 3rd date and the weather didn't cooperate, um, you know, we'd be looking at a, a postponement that would be into the first Saturday in November. Um, and obviously that's, um, you know, becomes more of a concern. Um, the health director indicated, uh, but did not make any commitment, you know, that he personally would like, you know, to look at some data from other town meetings, as well as um, what I, I believe we all would classify is the success of our own indoor town meeting on June 29th, to consider whether that is a viable uh, option for us to, to, uh, to have. And I know that he is gonna be discussing that um, I believe, along with the moderator at a Board of Health meeting on Thursday, September 10th. So in summary, what we are recommending this evening is that the select board vote to sign the warrant um, for a Monday evening, October 5th date at 189 Park Street. And we only pick that date because that's the date that was set after a hearing that's required under the town's charter in January. Um, some of you can see I have uh, I've asked Attorney Klein to join us here from KP Law, and he has joined us. We have discussed the feasibility and ability to um, change the date from October 5th to October 3rd, which in the opinion of town council, and I don't want to you know, speak for him, but the moderator, um, after consulting with the select board and the Board of Health, as well as public safety and public health officials, has the ability to do so. So we would be both asking the board to sign the warrant this evening for the date that was set in the hearing, and then in the next vote, asking that it recommend to the, to the uh, town moderator that the town meeting be held on Saturday, October 3rd at 11 o'clock a.m. And the intention would be to hold it at Arthur Kenny Turk Field as we did the August meeting. That date's not able to be pulled off for some reason, mostly because of weather. Um, we have the ability to delay to another uh, date. Um, we'll also be having a conversation about the feasibility of having the meeting indoors. With the Board of Health, and I think that you know they, they've ex at least that the health director has expressed a willingness to consider that. Again, that's not the position of the Board of Health, nor is it the recommendation, but it is, I think, an important piece of the conversation that we'll be having um, next Thursday with the uh, the Board of Health. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? <clears throat> Good. Members good? All right. Okay, Mr. Studo. Uh, Mr. Mr. Studo, go ahead. 
are we are we gonna have a, just a discussion uh, about it, or should I make a comment now about the some of the what's already been maybe proposed to work as a first thing? You mean the warrant? I mean the day the, the about the venue. Oh, the venue. Okay, yeah. No, this is the time for us to discuss it. All sure. right. Um, just a quick note on um, you know. One thing to consider, and I brought it up for everybody, just so everybody knows, the average uh, temperature high on October 3rd in North Reading, Mass, is 55 degrees. So just something to say that if we get a perfect day based on the averages, you're looking at, if you do it at 9 a.m., you're looking at a day in the high 40s to start. So just, just something to note that, um, so my question my is, should we be working on making the warrant slim down enough where the co first choice is inside? Because I, I think that we're just, you know, again, all we have is data. I mean, it could be an 80 degree day, right? We've had stranger weather come, but I just feel that if you just look at how weather has typically been around that time, we're really, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping for a pretty good October day. So I, I just, you know, just to make that comment that I, I think that um, maybe the conversation with the Board of Health that how can we get it inside happen sooner rather than later, because I just, I, I, I could see, I could see this just not working, you know, or we could, we may run, I mean, we may just get a, a, a pretty bad turnout. Not that, you know, it all depends what we're discussing. So it's just one thing that when you look at the average, it's just, unless we're doing it. So if we did this at one in the afternoon on that day, we can hope for a 60 degree day on average. But if we did it in the morning, like the last meeting, then, you know, I mean, I, I don't mind the cold, but it's just at that point, if we have a little rain, wind or anything, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable from the start. And we know that even a quick meeting that we expected to be 90 minutes for the turkey farm discussion, we were there for three and a half hours. So just that's my take. Okay. So pre preferring it to be indoors. Correct. Based opposition preferring it to be indoors. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and we're, I, I think, does anyone else have any uh, pr perspective on that one way or the other? I mean, we did have a successful indoor meeting the last time we yeah. also took the extra steps of doing the virtual the board took the extra steps for both actually to do the virtual meeting in advance which i think helped clarify and streamline um <coughs> and then um we did pare down we did pare down the the uh the town meeting that we had indoors because of COVID-19 and it's not looking like this is gonna be letting up anytime soon. So I think that would be a good suggestion. I think we have to go through these um, individually too because uh, as the members know from the packet, these what's presented in the warrant was, we are gonna be going through a review, Mr. Studo. So I think we could maybe decide what, what further can be whittled, whittled out, if anything, um, because it looks like a group of um, the town administrator work with a group on what what they wanted on here. So it's a pretty lengthy um, it's a pretty pretty lengthy um, warrant. The, there's a lot of articles on the warrant. Mr. O'Leary, too. Mr. Student, did you have anything else you no, wanted? No, that's it. Okay. Mr. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, do you have anything you want to? No, I, I mean, any I comment. Um, I think that Mr. Sudo brings up some really good points. Um, I can't help but agree with him. Uh, and we did do a very successful indoor town meeting, but we did really whittle it down. So it depends on how much we can whittle this down, you know, because we don't want to be indoors for a lengthy amount of time. That's the difference between what we did before. Okay. Mr. O'Leary. Um, what will we set up for in the gymnasium? How many people safely distanced and all that? I think we were around 150 total. I uh, thought it was more than I thought it was. It was because we had the satellite room with, with the uh, set up next door. 
that was being manned, but we didn't have to use it. I mean, we, we had we had what two hundred and fourteen people or two hundred and eighteen people at the outdoor town meeting on the on the turkey farm deal, uh, which generated a significant amount of interest. Um, and I don't know if there's there may be a couple of articles here on the October town meeting proposed more that would generate some interest, obviously, like um, selling land for affordable housing and maybe the Main Street thing. Um, the rest of it is sort of boring, you know, <laughs> but time consuming but boring. Um, but but I again, you know, I think, I think we need to, and so I, I guess, again, I, I thought the number was higher than 150 in the gym, but. Uh, I'd ask. That, that, I believe the fire chief is on the call through you, Madam Chair. Chief Stats, do, do, do you uh, have additional detail on the, the occupancy we had? I know you were, I remember you telling me what the number was. <laughs> I believe it was 175. I think we had 115 in the gym. I think we had uh, overflow seating set up, uh, although we didn't have to use it. Okay, so that might be pushing it, you know, and that, that's if you still use the gym or you use the, and then use the overflow. But, uh, and then again, uh, we also have the auditorium, but again, we'd have to confer with the, uh, the school department as to what their concerns might be in relation to, I mean, the school is going to be open part-time anyway. Mm -hmm. It's going to be open four days a week, but, um, you know, what would work, what wouldn't work? You know, can we, can it be done inside? Because I, I agree, you know, as the later we get into the the year, um, the more difficult it's going to be to to hold it out of the football field. So, Mr. Walnut, do you have anything you wanted to add? No, I'm pretty comfortable with the October third. I think the eleven o'clock start time is good. I think you know, uh, you know, if, if it all turns into bad weather, the next stop is going to be inside. I think that's pretty clear at this point. So, uh, let's give it our best shot. We've gotten lucky two out of two times. I think. We're just going to hold our fingers and hope it works out. So I think uh, 11 o'clock starting on the third makes sense. And if we have to punt, we're going inside. I, I don't see any, I don't see any other path but that. Okay. So why don't we, why don't we do this? I think we could go through these warrant articles and see what we might be able to pare down. Um, at least go through the exercise of paring it down. Um, and actually we do have Mr. Murphy here. Mr. Murphy, I don't know if you have any, comment or oh. anything to add to the discussion? If I may, Madam Chair, I mean, I, th I think the, when we had our, our meeting last week, I think the average temperature, depending where you get it from, right? I think the average temperature was 60 degrees. So I, I, I think October 3rd on a Saturday at 11 a.m., if it's a sunny day, yeah, it might be cool, but I, I, I think that works and and provides the size of the venue that we need. And to Mr. Walden's point, we've got gotten lucky two out of two times, so I'm willing to roll a dice on three out of three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I know that... Uh, we did, we did not ask the uh, superintendent of schools to come on this call, but he did participate in our discussion last Thursday. Um, and uh, the feedback that, um, you know, that he provided was that if we were looking to have an indoor town meeting, um, that he would, um, that, that, that the meeting be held um, on either a Friday evening or a Saturday, as opposed to during the work week, uh, where there would be a short turnaround for sanitizing, et cetera. Um, so, uh, and I think that that's, you know, certainly reasonable um, feedback, um, you know, from, from him um, in terms of the facility. So, you know, again, that kind of pointed us to the Saturday in either scenario. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're, do we, we have a vote on that at this point? Or are we, or did you combine the votes into all one? Because we still have to review the articles that okay. were in the packet. I, I structured the order this way purposely because uh, I, I knew that the location was sort of affected by what was on the warrant. So the, the last steps in this process, in my opinion, was going to be voting to sign the warrant and then voting a recommendation to the moderator with regard to the date. 
So I think if it's, uh, I think we are at a point where just going through the articles is probably the best next step. Um, I've prepared a series of motions for recommendations as well. We could take those up separately if the board would like rather than delay the discussion. Um, but if you'd like, I'll go through um, the, the motions and just offer the, the uh, articles and offer my, my feedback. Um, so um, would you, I'm just trying to get to that page so my, my colleagues can get to the page in the packet with the, I know the warrant is in here. It's 125. I, uh, thank you. 125? Correct, yes. Thank you. Oh, and you know what? I Eduardo, should we, should we use the revised one you sent out that's you five pages? I sent a revised version um, earlier. Um, and yes, if you go to that attachment in the email I sent out, um, that's the, the most updated version of the, uh, the warrant. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Is your email up at seven o'clock? Correct, yes. Okay. And the document is North Reading-2020 Fall ATM Revised Draft Warrant. Okay. Okay, MPG DK. Okay. <clears throat> So we're looking at that and the article one is here and act on reports of town officers and committees and that's a pretty standard um, article for each annual um, meet, town meet, in each town meeting, right? That isn't one that can kind of, that's just one we need in the warrant, right? Correct. The next one we, is- um, I should say it's one we customarily have and we actually, if okay. I recall correctly- Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, all right. So you uh, you have a motion to recommend motion that we recommend that one, right? I, I did. I wrote motions for all of these articles, but okay. in terms of this article, I believe it's an annual requirement that we satisfied mm -hmm. at the June town meeting. So you know, if we didn't want to entertain anything that's not strictly the business of the warrant, you could not have it on the warrant. I mean that that is an option. And that you're going to find that that's true for many of these warrant articles. Unfortunately, the ones that are probably most time sensitive are probably the more controversial items. Okay. Well, we look forward to getting to those. So, uh, do, what's the mo what's the board's pleasure on Article One? Do we want to do want to take a motion and deliberate, Mr. Studo? Is there a motion there? Yes, there is. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend uh, at town meeting article one here and act on reports of town officers and committees okay i have a motion by mr studo do i have a second second I have a second by mrs gonzalez um any further discussion yep. mr walner yeah just i would just ask that the, the, the reports be as brief and to the point as possible that, you know, if we're going to go forward, let's make everybody try to be as brief and get to the point as possible and not add anything extra. So that just be a general, general uh, request all the way around the entire meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So a motion and a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Motion to recommend. Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. The chair is aye, so we're recommending Article 1. Next one is prior years bills, which again is pretty standard fare. Mr. Gilberto, are you anticipating that this is necessary for the October meeting? I have not heard that there are any. Um, if the finance director has information to the contrary, um, certainly please weigh in, Liz. Okay, so hearing none, do we have a motion on this one? Yep. It Madam Chair. On, Mr. Gilberto, doesn't need to be on the. This is one, if we are going to have a meeting, I would suggest leaving it only because occasionally the, we, we receive bills that have a, a late fee associated with them or something to that effect. So uh, we vote to, to recommend a town meeting. Yes, please. That's my recommendation. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Studo, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting. Article 2, prior year bills. Second. 
I have a motion by Mr. Sudo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And chair is aye. So we'll recommend at town meeting if anything comes up. Um, Article three, transfer funds to capital improvement stabilization fund. And is there a, a dollar figure recommended? Is this uh, remaining to be recommended, Mr. Gilberto? Madam Chair, well, we do have a, um, yes. a, a fall transfer. It's not required that we do it in the fall, but if we are having a meeting and have this article, we would make a transfer. And then we're just gonna ask the finance director to confirm the dollar amount. I believe it's 200,000. I would have to double check with um, the capital plan, but I believe it's 200,000. And that's generally from free cash. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so it's a, a mo uh, the motion is to recommend that, right? <laughs> okay, so Mr. Studo, do I have a motion? Yep. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 3, appropriate money to the capital improvements Stabilization fund and the amount of roughly two hundred thousand from free cash. Second. Would it be roughly, or would it be specifically two hundred thousand? It would be specifically, right? I tried to keep it vague. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a motion to, Mr. We have a motion to by Mr. Studo to transfer. 200 to recommend transfer of 200,000. We have a second by Mr. O'Leary, right, Mr. O'Leary? Correct. We got a little hand raised by Attorney Klein. Did you want to say anything, Attorney Klein? Yeah, yeah. I just was saying tonight, I, I mean, we obviously, you, you don't know the motions that are going to be made yet on town meeting floor or even what necessarily the exact amounts are. I mean, I, I think tonight you're voting the place the articles on the warrant because I mean, obviously there'll be more specific information. You, the board doesn't need to decide tonight how much they want to transfer yet because those numbers could change between now and um, third. Okay, thank you, Mr. Klein. All right, Mr. Gil Mr. Gilberta, why don't you add a little more to the confusion here? Go ahead. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. The, the, um, we customarily ask the board to vote uh, recommendations on articles that are, are normally part of um, our, uh, our accounting or our, our financial transactions that take place, sometimes regardless of the dollar amount. So the board's had a custom of recommending articles like that when there isn't a dollar amount in question. So for example, it could be that it's $200,000 in the plan, but that we look at the overall, fi overall financial plan and increase that dollar amount. Um, I, I was kind of thinking, if we get to an article and the board's feeling is, look, we really don't want that on the warrant that we speak up and vote to remove it from the warrant. But otherwise, I think, while I understand Attorney Klein's question, the board's practice has been with these non-financial articles where we know there's going to be a transaction or there's highly likely to be one to just simply recommend it without a dollar amount. Okay, but we are all here. We're reviewing. There was an internal team that put this on the warrant for us. So isn't it helpful to the board's edification whether or not they want to vote to recommend that we know an amount and a source? I mean, I think that that with the recommend. You're, you're breaking up, Madam Chair. Well, that was possible to say. because you're asking us to sign the warrant tonight, too. So that's the other thing, <laughs> right? You want us to sign it, so you wanted this to be as complete as possible with regard to our recommendations on it, too, right, Mr. Gilberto? That is correct. Yes. Okay. So, so did you want us not to vote? Um. So now we're not voting on the amount, even though we, that was the amount that we were given. You just want us to vote to recommend a transfer. Correct. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Studer to recommend 200,000, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Does anyone want to discuss that further? Seeing none. All right. On the motion, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. 
Mr. Walner. Aye. Did we lose Kate? Oh, I think we lost Kate. Uh, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Walner, Mr. Studo. Aye. Um, I will say aye. I don't think I can speak in the chair. Kate joins us in the future. <laughs> um, yeah, right. we can. Can we get can her? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes we um, can. I'm sorry. Uh, did you call the vote, Ms. Gonzalez? Yeah, oh. we all voted on. Oh, we just need your vote, Kate. Oh. It's an I. It's a yes. <laughs> Trying to troubleshoot this. I apologize. We have dead air. Yes. Um, okay, she's asking me to take over. So we're gonna move on to Article 4. Appropriate money to stabilization fund. Madam Vice Chair, we do not have a dollar amount to recommend at this point in time. Um, depending upon the fiscal year, we have made a recommendation to transfer in funding to the stabilization fund. But at the moment, I cannot tell you that that will be a recommendation nor can I provide a dollar amount and therefore we have recommended that the board, if it wishes to have this on the warrant, which if we're going to have a town meeting, I would say that it should be on, that the board vote to recommend at town meeting the So Do we have a motion for that, Mr. Studo? Yep. Madam Vice Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, appropriate money to the stabilization fund. Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Waller? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. I'm an aye. Um, we'll have to abstain the chair. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think she's there. I, I, I heard you. I just couldn't okay. see you. And <laughs> I heard you. Recommend a town meeting. And I'm an aye. Okay. Any further okay. questions? <laughs> We're on to Article 6. Five. Five. Did I miss Article 5? I apologize. I heard four. It's article no, we're, we're at five. Okay. Now, article 5 is the same situation as is Article 6. Um, we, I should say Article 5 is the same as Article 4. We um, do not always make such a transfer at town meeting. Um, depending upon our financial picture and the strategy moving into the next fiscal year, we may wish to make a transfer. Um, where there's no dollar amount identified at this point, we would be asking the board to recommend it at town meeting. Madam Chair, are you with us? Yes, do, you, do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting. Article five, appropriate money to the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I am seeing none, so Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay. Next article is six. Same thing for article six. Do we have a motion on article six? Madam uh -huh. Chair, 
Madam Chair, through you, we do customarily recommend a transfer at the October town meeting. However, the dollar amount won't be available until we close out um, the uh, last month's um, health insurance costs, which normally occurs sometime in the middle of September, at which point we'll report the dollar amount to the board. So we're recommending the recommended town meeting. Um, I apologize, Mr. Gilbert, I thought you said that for all three of these, that's why I moved to a vote. So yeah, I, did, and I corrected myself because I realized six is slightly different than five and four. Okay. All right. So do we have a, vo a motion, Mr. Studo? Yep. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 6, appropriate money to the participating funding arrangement fund. So we recommend a town meeting? Recommend yes. Town meeting. No, no, we're going to be making a transfer. Sorry, recommend. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Madam, Chair. Madam Chair. Mr. O'Leary. Yeah. Just uh, on these articles that we know there's going to be a transfer made. We just don't know what the dollar amount is. Uh -huh. so to, to me, we should be informing the public, regardless of whatever the administration recommends to us as far as the source of funding and the dollar amount, I find it hard to believe that we're not going to endorse it and, and recommend it and advocate for it. So we should notify the public that we're going to be in favor of transferring some money from some source into these funds, and we should be recommending it, not waiting till town meeting. That, that, and again, historically that's what we've done with a lot of these articles but we don't have the exact dollar amount until the books are closed we know that we're going to be transferring in we know we're going to be following the administration's recommendation and therefore we're going to inform the public we're going to recommend it so in this, okay. in this instance i think we should be recommending it but regardless of what the dollar amount is going to be or the source okay Mr. Studo, did you move to recommend or recommend a town meeting? I think I said recommend a town meeting by accident, even though I was just saying recommend. Well, I don't think that was by accident, but that's okay. So did you want to withdraw your motion? I think that's what was recommended by the administration for us. At to town meeting, our, okay. So recommend is a motion to recommend. Is that, Correct. Is that what you're doing? Okay. Yes, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 6. Appropriate money to the participating funding arrangement fund. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. And Chair is aye. Amend the operating budget, Article 7. Madam Chair. Mr. Murphy. Yeah, I, I just, to, to follow on uh, Mr. O'Leary's comments, I just, to the extent you put dollar amounts in these articles, you put yourself in a, in a box. So if, if the amount is 200,000 today and 190 or 210, you, you're putting yourself in a box. Okay. So. We can recommend chair. the article, recommend the article, and try not to put yourself in that position. Okay. Madam Chair? Yeah, uh, Attorney Klein, yes. My understanding, looking at the warrant, and that, that's the point I was trying to make earlier, is the articles that you're approving, even though the town administrator is talking about likely um, financial amounts, those amounts, and the town administrator can correct me if I'm wrong. There are no amounts in the warrant. The warrant is written just as the moderator suggested. It, 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 there are no amounts in the warrant articles that you're reviewing right now. So, Mike, I don't know if you want to add some clarity, but no, I don't no, think that's correct. We, we, it was your intent that the, the, the warrant be revised to add those amounts. No, we, we did not intend to revise the warrant, nor have we um, customarily done so. Um, and, and for the articles where the dollar amount is a very variable, we often will either say we're going to recommend that town meeting, or if we don't think we're going to do it, recommend passing over. But um, we've, Darren, you, you don't have in front of you, nor do you, Mr. Moderator, but the board has um, recommendations on each one um, with regard to what we believe the recommendation ought to be. In the case of Article 6, I totally butchered it in that I was reading from Article 5, Madam Chair, which is what caused the confusion. So I apologize for that. Okay, I think we corrected it with the vote and Mr. O'Leary made the correction. 
but we're on to Article 7 now, but there is nothing, no, no monetary amount to Article 7. What's your recommendation on Article 7? It's, in, it's included here, and it's one of the standard articles that we keep at town meeting, just like the, the previous ones that we've just read. So do you have a recommendation for us on Article 7? I do the recommended at town meeting because I do not know the details of which transfers will be required. Okay, thank you. M Mr. Studo, do we have a motion on that? Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 7, amend FY 2021 operating budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. And a chair is aye. All right. And we're on to Article 8. Rescind authorization to borrow. It's another standard uh, article on our warrants, right, Mr. Gilberto? Right. Your recommendation on this? To recommend a town meeting because we do not have the specifics of any authorization which may need to be rescinded at this point in time and often it, it, that develops as we get closer to the meeting. Thank you. Mr. Studer, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 8, rescind authorization to borrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Studer, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studer. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Chair is I. Article 9 is amend the FY 2021 capital budget. Mr. Gilberto? Madam Chair, this is a bit unique this year in that the Capital Improvement Planning Committee recommended a limited capital improvement program at the June town meeting. Um, we're putting this article on there and recommending that it be voted to recommend at town meeting in case there are any further projects that are recommended for appropriation at a capital in nature. Okay. All right, Mr. Studo. Yes. We have... Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 9, amend FY 2021 capital budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary to recommend a town meeting. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Chair is I. Article 10, appropriate money for special counsel legal <clears throat> services. This is in regard to the um, lawsuit against PMA and Doran Whittier. Mr. Gilberto. That's correct, Madam Chair. Um, as of this time, there is not a request for funding. Um, however, um, we have historically put this on the warrant while the case is proceeded, just in case there's, been, there's any change to the town standing. Um, between now and the uh, meeting. So we would therefore recommend the board vote to recommend at town meeting the article. Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting article 10, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Chair is aye. Article 11 is appropriate money for Martin's Pond water treatment. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. This warrant article is a follow up to a presentation we heard from the committee in the beginning of August. Um, I, my impression from the select board was that it was looking favorably upon this. And again, we know the reason it's been suggested to us is so that it, if approved in October, it would give the committee the ability to conduct the treatments early enough in the season um, to be more effective. Um, we put it down as a recommend um, and we believe the dollar amount to be $25,000 based on the presentation that we've heard from the committee. Um, if the board wishes to um, wait until we have certified free cash, which is likely to be the funding source for this, project in order to recommend uh, it, you could hold off until town meeting, but I thought I heard a couple meetings ago that the majority of the board were looking favorably on this appropriation. Yes, I think the 
the um, it had the unanimous approval uh, when we saw the presentation. So, um, and I think they they did they did quote twenty five, but we're not gonna we're gonna save the amount to later, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So, is your um, recommendation to recommend a town meeting? I would normally say to recommend a town meeting only because of the issue of nailing down an existing funding source. I'm projecting a funding source will exist, but it does not exist as of yet. Um, if the board wished to take a more uh, stronger endorsement of this article because of its previous conversations, it could vote to recommend this article. It's the board's pleasure. All right. Mr. O'Leary. I believe we should be recommending it now, sending a strong and clear message to the community that we're in support of uh, addressing the needs of the Martin, Martin's Pond. Again, it's a tremendous resource that needs to be addressed and it's a small amount of money and somehow or another we'll find the, find the sources to, to support it. And if we can't, then we'll have to change our recommendation. But I think a strong message of recommending it now is important. Okay. I think we would probably unanimously concur with you, though I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but Mrs. Gonzalez, are you in agreement with that? I am. And Mr. Walner, are you in agreement with that? Yes, Mr. I am. Mr. Studo, are you in agreement with that? Correct. All right, so do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 11, appropriate money for Martin's Pond water treatment. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. No, article 12. And so all, so far, all 11 are sticking in the article, uh, sticking in the warrant. So Article 12 is fun <laughs> town building repairs. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. This has been a customary article for the fall town meeting. Um, moved to the June town meeting a couple of years ago and then moved back to fall because of the COVID situation earlier this year. Um, I do not have a list of projects at this point in time, um, although we may have some items for consideration. So I'm therefore suggesting that the board vote to recommend that town meeting. Okay. Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 12, Fun Town Building Repairs. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Just a quick question. Is this the normal $50,000 that we're talking about? Customarily is, yes. Okay. And do you anticipate because of resources that we're not going to have the $50,000 to, I mean, we certainly have $50,000 worth of it's maintenance repairs to it's more uh, it's more apprehension about capacity to take on additional projects because we do have some projects that are pending still previously approved. I want to make sure we get done. That that's more the concern. Okay. Again, to, to me, this is you know money that we normally appropriate on a regular basis, and it's factored into the budget. Um, and so normally we'd recommend this. So, and again, I know I seconded the motion, but it's more for purposes of discussion. But okay. even, if, even if we have uh, the money appropriated and it doesn't take place, so the repairs don't take place until next June, which is still in this fiscal year, or begin, begin then, that's fine. You know, but semantics, that's fine. Okay, so we have a motion to recommend a town meeting by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Um, we have a motion on the floor. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And you probably is I. <clears throat> Article 13. Okay. Establish fund for historical buildings, appropriate funds. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is the first of a few that are not standard um, articles, as the board members probably know. Um, you may recall that this was an article that was on the warrant for the June town meeting in a draft form um, in April or May of this year. Um, because it fell outside of the sort of core purpose of the June town meeting, which was to address the budget and other time sensitive items. This article was taken off the warrant for the June town meeting. It's back on here for the October town meeting. And the intention of the folks at the Historical Society, the North Reading North Antiquarian Historical and Antiquarian Society, which is a nonprofit group that has a, uh, an, uh, an agreement 
to um, um, exist and to uh, operate historic buildings on the grounds of the, uh, um, the Putnam House in the center of town. They had come to um, Mrs. Gonzalez and Mr. O'Leary, I think in January of this year, um, asking if the town would be able to contribute some funds to this and set up an account to which the residents could make donations as well. Um, and there is an ability to do that, but it would require a, a special act of the state legislature in order for a single account to exist in that form. Um, some of the board members may know, and for those who do not know, um, in terms of establishing a gift fund into which donations could be made, the board has the authority under state law without requiring town meeting approval to do that if it so desired. In terms of appropriating town money, that would need to go through town money uh, to town meeting and absent a special act of the legislature it would need to be separate from the account into which funds are being donated, um, which is what we're recommending here, more so in the interest of expediency than anything else. Um, so it would be sort of, I guess, a match, if you will, and we would ask the board to um, establish a gift account pursuant to state law at a future meeting if that was its desire. Uh, I do feel, I, I should note, there is a 31-year-old um, agreement between the town and the Historical and Antiquarian Society for the land um, on which these historical buildings are located. Um, the town um, provides um, insurance coverage and at times has provided um, work uh, assistance with any issues that are on the property. I think we had a, a well, a, a, an old well that collapsed that needed to be shored up and we were asked to assist and we did. But I, I do want to make the board aware that when the agreement between the town and the Historical and Antiquarian Society was signed, 31 or so years ago, it included a provision that, that the, um, the property would be maintained and repaired at the sole expense of the Historical and Antiquarian Society. So, um, you know, th this language would not necessarily align with that, but I think that those are terms that if we wanted to consider um, amending them, we could. I mentioned the agreement is 31 years old. Uh, it happened to automatically renew um, a, a few months before my first day working for the town in 2014. So um, I have not been in, involved in, in its development or in its renewal, but um, I would think that based on the, what was requested of us by the Historical and Antiquarian Society that they would be agreeable um, to some sort of amendment. So I know that's sort of a, a bit of a lengthy explanation of something that I think we hope would be a little more straightforward, but I just wanna provide the board all the information. Okay, so I believe when when this topic came up and was placed was placed for inclusion, it was a it was a rather nominal sum of funds that was being requested. Right. But um, I don't think any of that information was um, available. time. I think I think again uh, this was another item that oh dear sorry okay I'm sorry about that we got it's, you now. it's on computers I apologize all right so it, it what's the board's pleasure with regard to this is this one you want to keep on <laughs> the warrant article I, I had said that we, we were told it was a nominal amount yeah. that was being requested but it seems to be based on your explanation, this is a, a much more complicated matter than simply just designating a nominal amount. So what's the board's pleasure with regard to this? Any comment? Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, Ms. Gilberto, do you think that we could get the wording um, beforehand? Would we have time for that? You thought that maybe some wording needed to be so, yeah, I, I do believe so. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, if the board wanted to see that the, the agreement was, you know, adjusted to reconcile the intent here and, you know, do so, in, you know, publicly, this article could be left on the warrant and just um, put for a recommendation at town meeting um, rather than a recommendation this evening. And Madam Chair, you are correct. I believe the spirit and the intention of the conversation was a, a really a nominal amount of seed money 
um, to sort of kickstart what was, I think, going to be a request for donations from the town to assist in maintaining these buildings. Um, you know, I, I recall some discussion about a, a you know a five to ten thousand dollar amount. It wasn't a significant amount in the context of other transactions at this meeting. Okay, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, no, I, I think we should leave it on here and uh, give ourselves a shot at um, getting something set up um, appropriately to do it. We could always pass it over if we if we can't come to uh, an agreement or. They can't meet on a timely basis to adjust the, the lease agreement and uh, you know but i think we should provide ourselves an opportunity to to address the situation if we can and again i don't think it's going to be a lot of conversation either time-wise okay um anyone else mr walner i'm good to leave it on i agree with steve O'Leary. i think okay. it's good. Good discussion. I'd like to hear more about it before we get to the town meeting. Um, you know, but uh, we'll leave that up to that group to come forward and tell us more. All right. Mr. Studo? I'm good. All right. Do I have a motion then? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 13, establish fund account for historical buildings. I'm sorry, does that move to recommend a town meeting? <laughs> No, it's the, that's the no. question of the evening. <laughs> Mr. Gilberto has his hand raised there. We we did um, we did draft it as a recommend. However, we when we got the confirmation uh, opinion from town council, I, I think a recommend at town meeting would be appropriate, just because there's a couple things to button up. Uh, so, but I do agree. I think leaving it on the warrant would be certainly helpful towards resolving this issue. Okay, that's great. Okay, so a motion to... I would like to amend my motion. No, just make it. No, there was no second. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no second was granted. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 13, establish fund account for historical buildings. Second. Thank you, Mr. Studo. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez and Manny Pelli is I. We are at Article four, 14, yes, Fund Hazard Mitigation Plan Update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is an article that um, has, it's an issue that's come up only in the past two weeks, which is that the hazard mitigation plan that the town has um, is um, coming up upon an expiration date um, in the middle of next year. So the request is for funding to um, update that plan. So we're not writing a brand new plan, but we're updating a plan into which a substantial effort was put only five years ago. Um, this is a, a, a plan that is very important for us to be eligible for grant funding, particularly from the federal or state government in the event of an emergency. Um, and so um, updating it is very important, especially when we have a natural disaster that occurs. Um, it's unclear whether it would relate directly to the COVID situation only because of the timing with that emergency already being underway, but anything that would occur after the expiration of the plan, which is June 30th of next year, um, you know, could be, uh, could be jeopardized. So we are therefore recommending that the board vote to recommend this. Um, we are expecting it will be a, uh, an appropriation of $25,000 to update the plan. Okay. Um, any further discussion on that? Seeing none, do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 14, Hazard Mitigation Update. Second. I have a motion to recommend by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Chair is I. Article 15, um, it's acceptance of Mass General Laws Chapter 33, Section 59. Madam Chair, and thank this you. This is something that Mr. Gilberto told us we, we have already customarily been doing, so this is a, an administrative formality that he recommended we, we handle. That's absolutely correct, Madam Chair, um, that the town has a you know, it had a history of supporting its um, employees who are in 
military service uh, when they are called to duty or for training. Um, and so this would uh, codify what has been a practice that predates my tenure of allowing them to serve um, uh, with some limitations without loss of remuneration, including uh, benefited time off. And so we're asking that the board um, vote accordingly, um, vote to recommend this article and that town meeting approve it to uh, align our practice um, with, um, you know, to align the approvals with what the practice has been. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 15, adopt MGL Chapter 33, Section 59, Employees and Military Service. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And uh, Manu Pelli is aye. Article 16, fund Route 28 Main Street study and redesign. So this is a not one that we've spoken about. This is sponsored by Community Planning Commission and Department of Public Works, right, Mr. Gilberto? That's correct, Madam Chair. I, I, I'm, and with your indulgence, I'd like to just offer a, a summary and an update. Please, go ahead. Yes. Thank you. I know there was some discussion at the Community Planning Commission meeting um, two weeks ago. And to be clear, there were two articles that related, um, I, sorry, I'm skipping ahead the article. <laughs> so we have not discussed this, but I'm jumping ahead to Carpenter Drive and I apologize. Um, Route 28 and Main Street study and redesign. This has been an, an item that the town engineer, myself, and the uh, town planner have been discussing over the past year or so. You know, as we're moving forward on some projects, as we see the state making improvements on Main Street and communities to our south, um, as we you know, look ahead to what we hope will be um, uh, uh, some determinations in the next year with regard to wastewater, um, this would be an effort for us to begin the process of preparing any potential changes to Main Street that we would wanna take, see take place prior to it being um, repaid. Um, and while the state does not necessarily have a timeline uh, on which they are going to repave it, um, sometimes that timeline you know, can, can catch up quickly if they're able to reprogram funding that's available. And there's also been some discussion in the community with regard to uh, potential changes, um, whether it be complete streets style changes um, or other improvements, the addition of on-street parking. Those are things that would be outside the scope of a traditional state repaving project for the road and things for which if the town is interested in pursuing, um, we should consider um, planning for because I do envision that uh, if all goes according to what we hope will be the plan, we will be at a point where we'll have completed a major infrastructure reconstruction on the road in wastewater and the road will be in need of, of uh, improvements um, and, and repaving and that that may be the opportunity for us to take advantage of some state and federal funding uh, through the, trans the state's transportation improvement program to pay for it. Um, but in order to kick, to kick things off, we had initially requested an appropriation of $200,000. After the last board meeting, um, I uh, reached out to Representative Jones, who very quickly facilitated a meeting with representatives of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. And it would seem that a more appropriate step for us to take right now would be a uh, more of a study rather than a study and design. Um, in the amount of $90,000 um, uh, being appropriated to um, kick off and kind of start to get the community to acquiesce around um, a vision for um, what the street itself would look like. Not necessarily talking about the properties on the street, but we're talking about the, the, the layout itself. I know some of us are familiar that there was conversation not only about pedestrian improvements, but about um, uh, rotaries or roundabouts. And um, you know, that was only one component of a, a much larger uh, you know, review of the road that was done four or five years ago. This would allow us to continue the planning for all of the facets of that project. Um, and again, the goal being to get us into a point where we're, we're working towards getting substantial state and federal funding uh, for a project um, but that would likely be a number of years down the road. I know the town planner is on here this evening along with representatives of the planning commission. So. Uh, if I've, um, there's anything that they wish to add, I certainly would, uh, through you, Madam Chair, welcome any, any comment or feedback that they might have. 
as well as a town agent. Uh, just, just a quick question. So you're saying it's a to fund a study, a traffic study, and redesign of Route 28 Main Street is how it's worded. Although in the body of the article, it just says design. You're, you're, you're right. It does say design, but this would be with an eye towards. Um, it would be changing, potentially changing the layout. Of Route 28? Correct, yes. Okay. In the entire Route 28 or changing the layout where? Um, so the, the focus of the, the initial study that was done was the stretch uh, between Winter Street and Lowell Road um, and just slightly to the north and south of that. Um, I would ask the planner just to speak to the detail of the scope she's uh, proposed here um, through you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, sure. Uh, so th the study would include things um, like uh, warrant analysis for the intersections, looking at how the traffic patterns would work, you know, considering volume um, for things like a road diet. There are a number of scenarios um, that, that we were looking at um, as part of this. Um, in terms of the segment, um, I am actually looking at whether the quote we received was for just a portion or whether it would have been for the whole corridor. And actually, if the town engineer is on and wants to weigh in on that, um, we might get that information a little faster. Uh, Madam, I apologize to the town planner through you, Madam Chair. I know the town engineer is also on the call. Okay. Good evening. Uh, yeah, that the study was for uh, the entire length of Route 28 from Andover all the way to Reading. They'd have to study. There's seven lighted intersections and all the uh, unsignalized intersections, and we'd have to study the entire route. But I think the the main focus of um, updates would be that center section here, where 62 crosses of a bigger um, adjustment through that area. But you'd have to study the entire length to kind of get an idea of what to do in the middle. Okay, any questions? Um, uh, Mr. Studo. Uh, Mr. Roberto, is the, the grant you discussed, so, or the amount, is the 90,000 going to come from the state for the study or no? Or So my question, was, what was the, the discussion you had with I believe you said Representative Jones uh, that he got like so, what was that discussion centered oh. about that to drop the amount from two to 90 if they're not going to be coming up with the money anyways? So, so the, the sense that I got from the conversation was, you know, we, we were going to do a study and then advance, begin to advance further at design. And the feedback from the state was, you know, once you've done a, a study and, and as much as I, you know, hate to see progress, you know, be, be sort of, you know, rely on, on study because I know that that can have a, can be, um, you know, frustrating because it doesn't sound like progress. They really want to hear from us what our vision is for the road so that they can then begin the work of designing with us a, uh, a project. And that may involve additional design funds from the town down the road, or it may not. Um, you know, that's something that they agreed that they would look at. But what was clear from the call is that, you know, they want us to sort of coalesce around what our vision is for the corridor. Um, and and um, this would be a, the, the, the vehicle for us to, to do that, at least in a conceptual level. And then Mr. Gilberto, would that mean that if then we got to the next stage, and again, um, if it's this, do we need a whole study and design again, or can we use that study for the design? So I'm just getting at that. I've looked at some things over time for different things, and it seems that there was a study without the follow-up. And then when we got to the follow-up, there was another study with the follow-up and I'm just trying to see that it is it going to be the same situation where here's the study the state says okay let's go to the next step but let's have another study while we're at it so and I know you can't predict the future but it's just one of those things where if if the state's not if if they're not coming up with the money is it something where we can kind of just plan ahead without doing it to you know and again just trying to get some guidance I just don't want to spend the same money twice Sure, no, I think it's a great question. And uh, the, certainly the planner and the engineer can correct me if I, if I have any of this information incorrect. Uh, but we were fortunate enough to get um, some state assistance um, in the form of what I think was a $10,000 grant in 2015-ish to study that corridor. 
between um, Winter and Lowell Road. Um, the, the thinking is, from what I understand, that this study would then work off of that, you know, be much more substantial in terms of the cost, um, you know, an additional $90,000 worth of work. Um, and that that would begin to point us towards, okay, what is it exactly is being designed here now? Um, you know, we know what the, the community's desire is for this, what its tolerance is for, for, for different things on the road. It would then be now time to advance to the design. And that's kind of the guidance that I took from Mass DOT at this call. So talking about a very initial building block done four or five years ago, taking it to, a, you know, a, to be a refined and expanded to the entire length of the road. Um, to ultimately inform um, a design that would take place um, either by the state or by the town and the state in conjunction with each other, depending upon the type of project. So the study is, uh, it's like a, visibil a visibility of design, of what could be designed. Am I yeah. saying that right? Is that what the study is? The uh, besides like in general though, I mean, will it tell us what you can't and cannot do? Well, why, why don't we let the uh, actually, the proponents of this can explain what exactly they want us to do. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's fine. Your question is is well put, um, and and if, if we're grappling with it here, so this is why why it's why it's here for us to talk about. But they are here and they've joined us, so maybe they can explain the difference between what was studied previously and the studies paid for previously, and when and what resulted from those previously paid for studies and this study now. So they're here, so that's why they're here to maybe answer in the finer details about that. Um, so go ahead, I can see you raising your hand, Mr. McKnight, go ahead. Um, so the grant we received um, for the study we completed in 2015 um, was for $15,000 and it was very, uh, very conceptual. And at that time um, we had hired not a traffic engineer, but uh, an urban design consultant um, to have a couple of um, community meetings and take a look at what um, might be possible to ask for some community feedback to see what people might like to see um, and to make some assumptions about uh, the traffic, but in recognition that that was not the, uh, the technical, it wasn't it wasn't the degree of engineering. It was no engineering, basically. It was, um, it was really, entirely conceptual um, with very informed by some basics of, of engineering and traffic study. Um, this would really be the traffic study, um, you know, including counts and turning movements and um, looking at all, you know, what the warrants are for each of the seven intersections and, um, you know, looking at uh, the possibility of road diet. Road diet was something that was suggested and people were, you know, asked to give feedback and we looked at what it would look like, but we didn't have the information to really do an analysis to see whether it would actually work and whether it would have negative or positive impacts on the corridor. So those are the kinds of things that this much more detailed engineering study would, would do. And I don't know if John had anything more to add to that, but that's kind of my, how I see the difference between that very, very conceptual plan early on and this, this much more detailed one that would enable us to actually go ahead then with, with a real design. Okay, sure. so I mean, it'll, that, you, are you saying that the first study was to just design, um, you, when you say conceptualize, no, no, no. design what it could look like, and then, the, but this study is going to study actually traffic, traffic patterns for, at the lights at the, at the, at the corridor, or, so this is more of an, uh, a specific engineering study versus what was paid for previously? Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't pay. I mean, it was a it was a grant funded project earlier and it was um, I mean, there was some basic traffic information that was given in certain terms of very basic counts at that time. Um, so it wasn't completely, um, you know, out of the air. It was, um, you know, but there were it, it was it was more based on it was more of an urban design study with traffic incorporated but it was not it just it just wasn't a full traffic study it was not we didn't have the funding for that and it was not of that type of scale at the time mr cliffell did you have were you did you sure want to it's i think it just brings us to that next level where it gets the the actual traffic counts and kind of uh can show us what we can actually do instead of just what we all want to do um, and whether what we want to do lines up with what you can actually do and the, I mean, in the last five years, there's been a, a bigger push towards traffic calming and having bike lanes and having a lot more, and especially this past year, um, 
having much more pedestrian friendly streets and roads. Um, and this will kind of show us what, uh, what direction we can go. And then it'll kind of flush out some community uh, meetings to help us tell what we're looking to do in the future as well and what we'd like to do. A, a traffic study is only good the day that it's done. You can never, you know, in five years down the road, there may be a bigger change that you can't control, but um, this gets us an up-to-date what we want to do now and then in the future if we go to if say 10 years down the road something changes or five years down the road we decide to move further um, then we have a little bit less to do but at least we have the ideas of the residents and the select board what what their interests are in the future of the road okay thank you mr Struno, any further questions no did that answer your questions yes Yes. Mrs. Gonzalez. I'm just um, questioning timelines here. And my forethought is the SOAR. Um, how does that all work? I mean, obviously we don't want to do anything to the roads if we know SOAR is gonna come in. Like, what are we talking about with timelines here? Are there expiration? 10, 12, 10 or 20 years. What, what did somebody just say? That was Mr. Hayden. I think he said sewers to 20 years. No, no, the change in a road like that can be uh, 10 years or more. Getting the designs done or getting the study done so that we know what the town wants and needs to help the planners plan uh, to bring in some shopping and, and different things of that nature. Um, but the state is going to take our ideas and what, what we would like, and hopefully incorporate that in their new designs. But it's, the, I don't see the, the road changing, getting complete in the next two or three. I, I'm pl pretty sure there's plenty of time to get the sewer in before any change is, is completed on the roadway. Well, that's my concern. If I may, um, yes. Madam Chair. Ms. Pierce, yes. Um, First of all, uh, one of the things that that initial study did was to educate us about what the possibilities were um, for changing that roadway and, and, what the, and, and how it worked. And subsequent to that, at different meetings, we had members of the community come in and comment on what they liked and what they didn't like. So it actually began the education process also of the, of the uh, people in the community about what, what's possible on that roadway and what it would look like. So this, this new study would be the it appears to me anyway, would be a continue, would in fact be a continuation of that, only incorporating the entire road so that we had a, an idea of what we wanted to do with the whole thing. And one would, uh, one would hope that, um, that we could get things moved along to the point where the installation of sewer and the reconfiguring of the roadway could be consecutive. It would be great to do them both at the same time. Um, um, and so we would hope to, to try to work towards that end. Mrs. Gonzalez, does that answer your question? I think so. Any other questions? Mr. O'Leary, any questions, comments? No, I, I think it's a good idea. And I think we should be laying the groundwork, or well, continuing the, laying the groundwork for, you know, what do we want to see out on Route 28? What is it, you know, possible? And then, you know, what can we afford to do? And again, this is all in conjunction with, it happens to be simultaneously with, with the prospects of sewerage coming down Route 28. You don't want to be digging up the road twice if you don't have to. Nor does the state want you to dig it up the road twice if you don't have to. Right. You know, so to me, this is, uh, it's timely. It's, uh, it's important information that we're going to need to make some informed decisions. And, um, and if we can get the state to partner with us, you know, all the better. So it's... Um, you know, and it, to, me, to me, this is something that we've been talking about for years, you know. Uh, you know, I grew up here and most people say, oh, look at Reading, look at Andover, you know, we're in between. Uh, you know, what can we do to enhance Route 28? What can we do uh, looking forward as to, you know, when our population is aging and we need a, we need a downtown, you know, we, we don't have a downtown. Uh, do we want to create a downtown? You know, and how much of an investment are we going to make? So these, this study is just a continuation of 
Um, a lot of work that's been put in by the Planning Commission, previous uh, boards of selectmen and other people throughout the community over the last 15 or 20 years, uh, thinking forward. And, and to me, I think it's a, it's a worthwhile investment in information that's gonna be vital for us to make informed decisions. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner, any comment, questions? Yeah, um, I recall back in May of 2015, sitting with Danielle, Michael, the chamber, um, some other people who cared about this, this road. And we were sitting at Heavenly Donuts and we were trying to brainstorm how could you make North Reading more commercially viable. And we kind of batted around the issue for about an hour. And finally, I just naively said to Michael, who was sitting next to me, um, you know, this is a state highway. Will the state, high, will the state let you change this road? And he said, yes, they will, if you have a good reason. And that kind of, we stopped the meeting at that point because it just opened up a whole new set of possibilities. And since we've had that discussion, you know, CPC has been on a mission of doing a number of different studies. And I would say this study probably is one of the last studies we need to do before we have this master plan and we, we, we decide what we're gonna do going forward as Mr. O'Leary said. So there's no doubt this highway is, is very undesirable. If you've ever run down it or walked down it, which I have, watching cars go by you at 55, 60 miles an hour is a bodily experience. You feel it as they go by. And there's no reason why we shouldn't have a downtown feel to our highway. This study will launch us to get to that point. And it's really a magic moment for us because again, all these studies have, have already been completed and this would be a number, a, a, one of the last studies we need to kind of make an informed decision going forward. So I am strongly in support of us doing this. There's a long lead time in doing this kind of work, work excuse me. And um, I, 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 I'm a strong in support of us um, bringing this forward to the town and getting it voted forward so we can move forward. Thanks, Mr. Wallner. Um, I do have a couple of questions. If and uh, it's it's getting back to Mrs. Gonzalez's point and a little bit of Mr. Wallner's point too. Um, if you know, Mr. Pierce, when was the last time that Route 20 was redesigned in North in North Reading? Do you have an idea of that? Actually, I think the last time that well, when it was all repaved was the last time, but I, and, but my understanding is that the plan that they worked was, was from the late sixties and they finally got around to doing it. So, um, um, I, I think that probably if we, if we get the study done and we, if we get in a position to do a design, then if sewer comes along and we have a design ready, I have a feeling that the state would be far more willing to participate with it, with us. If we're if we're ahead of the game, if we have a design ready and we're and we're and we have sewer ready to go and we can do the whole thing at once. But planning is always the most important part of it. Uh, yeah. and I think that's why we need to move forward with this. So for that prior redesign, that sounds like it was a while ago. De yeah. It was decades ago, right? It's and true, did I think we pay because obviously the state redesigned it. Did we pay back then for a traffic study for the state? I know I believe that, it. no that that design I think was done by the state to upgrade the road because the road was in you know somewhat disrepair so that had, that, that had been on the books for a long time before they had finally actually did it okay so but did they have a traffic study back then what we had was we had a bunch of meetings in the um, in the um, old town hall over there in the um, lot which now the library and uh, there were a lot of things that were discussed. For example, uh, one of the things we wanted to do is to put uh, feed throughs underneath the highway so they could put all the electrics underground. Um, but a lot of those things never got done because there were a lot of difficulties and a lot of problems in the, in, in the repaving of that road. They, there's an area that they fixed and paved and it sank because it was on peat and they had to dig it all out. So there was no money left to do any of the um, uh, things that were suggested to them by the, by the businesses and the people back in that day. Uh, so basically all they did is rebuild it, you know, to make it strong, not necessarily to meet any particular design or anything. Okay. And I had another question. I know Mr. Gilberto said it was 90,000 that is the sum, even though we're not voting sums this evening, but it was a $90,000 quote. Where does that, where did that figure come from? 
I'm going to ask the town engineer just to speak to that as he gathered the, uh, the quotes. Sure, we sat down with uh, consultants and had them work together a quote. Uh, we can provide you with that, that quote that they had put together. And they had put together a couple of different things. Uh, the $90,000 was um, just the study portion of it with a couple of public meetings and conversations with MassDOT. And then they, they started looking further down the road and, and what a full redesign um, would be looking like for us if we got to that point. I will add that if we don't do anything, MassDOT will come in at some point and they'll, they'll repave the road. They are, you know, they're not good and they will pay for their study. They will pay for everything leading up to it. But all they're going to do is just do from curb to curb that's out there. If you want to progress this to the next level where we start bringing curbs in and adding parking and, and having much more than that. Uh, my experience, I've done a lot of construction jobs with MassDOT in the past. The communities that, that um, are on the top of the list and that get uh, what they're looking for, they're the one, they take the lead role and they really push <laughs> MassDOT along the way that they want MassDOT to go. Um, so I think that something like this will really really help us get what we want um, even if it's not in the next five years it'll really help us move along our ideas okay so who was the consultant that you sat down with um, uh, we sat down with tec out of andover you know we have a very well written quote that breaks out exactly where that ninety thousand um, dollars comes from in each piece of that and is there is it going to be an effort to get other quotes from different vendors on this to see what to yeah, see we sure can sit down with other uh consulting engineers just to see what if that's the right sum and then i just at, wanted to ask mr gilberto um where are we proposing to take this money from i'm projecting that it would be an appropriation of free cash uh, once certified All right, thank you. Um, any other questions from the members? Mr. Walner. I'll just point out that Reading, that redesign they did, the repaving they did on 28th, they did that in less than two years from the time they submitted to DOT. So they got it done really quick with a plan. So I'm not suggesting that we do ours in two years. What I'm, what I'm saying is what John said, is that if you have a good plan up front and the state is into traffic calming, they want to do that. They want to see you have um, business development, uh, then you get to the top when you need them to do the work. So um, there is evidence right next door. Okay, thank you, Mr. Longer. All right. Um, and Mr. Gilberto, the recommendation on this, what was the recommendation? It was to, um, to recommend. So it's, what's the board's pleasure with regard to this? Um, I'm um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, um, yeah, I, they, they answered my question and it, it makes sense that if you, um, it will arm the town with what we need to, uh, you know, seriously start making some moves without the typical excuses from the state level on certain things. So, you know, this will, it seems like this will give us what we need. So. Um, as long as, yeah, I mean, if the quote is 90, I mean, if we could do something better by getting a second one, so be it. But other than negotiating kind of a better price, I'd be in favor of it. So um, the, I, I should have asked you before this, you know, I mean, where we were, where our task was to kind of look at these articles and see if any of this is, um, can be pared down either. So is there any interest in, uh, removing this for another another meeting with it doesn't is it not really a sense of urgency with regard to this one um as there yes. seem to be mr Walner, i see your hand raised. yeah I do, because it does take a long time to do this study this is at least a year if not longer and um uh, i think there is a sense of urgency because we want this to tie out around the same time the fmpc comes up with their and other 
other studies that are in process right now. So um, to wait another six, seven months would kind of set things out of order. Okay, Mr. O'Leary. I concur, I think there is a sense of urgency. And again, because of the lead time, because of uh, <clears throat> just gathering the information and getting ourselves set up uh, appropriately to, to uh, control it ourselves. So I, I, think, I think it should remain on here and just allow for a presentation and let the, let the people vote. And I would be in support of recommending it. Okay, do we have a, any other comment? Do we have a motion, Mr. Stewart? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 16, Fund Route 28 Main Street Study and Redesign. I have a motion by Mr. Studo. Second. And a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Chair is I. Seventeen conveyance of town owned land for affordable housing development, Mac fifty six parcel sixty two, which is land located zero Chestnut Street. Uh, this is a an article again sponsored by the Community Planning Commission um, to. Uh, Seek RFPs uh, for the um, for affordable housing for housing for income fifty five and over. I think in your notes it said sixty two and over, but this reads fifty five and over. Um, and it, again, this isn't one that um, we've actually had before us before this warrant article draft came to us. So, Mr. Gilberto, you'll have to fill us in on some of the salient details of this one. Sure, um, and I think that the, the best way to describe it is that you know, this has been a, uh, a property that has been um, discussed as a potential location for the construction of an affordable housing project um, for um, I think eight or nine years at this point in time. It was originally approved um, at town meeting to be conveyed to the um, housing authority for a, a project that was to be funded using uh, federal um, housing production funds that um, that dried up and are, uh, to our knowledge, no longer um, available, and for which the housing authority or Mystic Valley um, Elder Services, which was also a partner in this, uh, we're looking to compete. Now, those resources are not available, and so um, you know we've been looking towards something that might be led by, uh, by the town. Um, and I think that, you know, we've sort of looked at what we did with the Polte property in, uh, in going for, you know, and asking a request for proposals, although perhaps doing so with some greater parameters than we did with um, the, uh, that, the property over where Polte is building um, in order to try to come up with a concept um, and, a, and, a, and an actual proposal from a developer for a, um, a, a lower moderate income housing development. Um, we have a uh, we had an initial contract uh, with a consultant to try to do some work that um, honestly was sidetracked by a number of different things over the past six months. Uh, six months, not the least of which is dealing with a public health emergency. And um, we've turned our attention back to this um, to this project. And um, the thinking here is we have a. a a, a revised scope with that consultant um, that she um, will work towards to give us some information to be reported to town meeting about the potential size of a development and potential parameters for a development that she believes the market will yield. And the thinking is that that would give the, the board and the planning commission the ability to say to town meeting, we're seeking the authority to go out for proposals on this property here's the type of development that we're seeing, you know, might take place at it based upon what we know about the property um, and asking folks to approve so that um, when we go to the market um, seeking proposals that uh, developers will be aware of our authority to, to actually proceed with the project. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we're hoping to try to get this project moving along 
Um, I don't think it would be unfair to say that there are a lot of unanswered questions about exactly what the development would be. Our hope is that we're going to have information from the consultant that will better inform what we can expect for responses when we go out for bid um, at the October town meeting, but we will not have gone out to bid nor will we have those proposals in hand. Um, so, you know, in, in light of that, and I think that we're all sensitive to the recent town meeting in which there was discussion about um, what exactly we were going to do with the parcel in question, namely the, the turkey farm property. And all, we could consider saying, look, you know, we, we know this is this emergency to this, we want to get this property developed, but perhaps it makes sense for us to let the process play itself out so we actually have proposals in hand um, moving forward. So that, that certainly is an option as well. I think the planner and I felt you know, that with the long gap between the two town meetings that we were trying to see if we could move forward with this at October town meeting. We're hopeful that we'll have information that will answer the questions, but I think we certainly understand that it's possible that it may not be sufficient. Any questions? Madam Chair, can I just ask maybe if the town planner has anything to add through you? Of course. Really, I, I think, you know, we talked at length about what the right way would be to position this article, whether to um, get a basic minimum amount of information about the project for October or to, um, you know, continue working with our consultant over the course of, you know, the year and have RFPs in hand um, and a much more complete project in June. Um, and we you know, decided that it, we could try to move move ahead right right now. Um, you know, I don't think it would damage the project either way. Um, it, it would be nice to be able to move ahead now to be able to put out an RFP to say that we've already had the town meeting vote to authorize us to dispose of the property for this purpose. And by the time town meeting comes, um, we will, you know, we're anticipating, um, you know, not only our consultant's opinion, but a consulting engineer, um, you know, will be providing information, having done soil testing and telling us what the possible yield would be for number of units. So we wouldn't be in a position where we would be telling town meeting, well, we think we want it to be of, of you know, senior affordable housing, but we don't know how many, many units. We, we would have more specific information about that. Um, and, you know, should it happen that the information we had wasn't really satisfactory or we really still had more questions, um, it, it, it wouldn't really harm things to, you know, to put it off to the next town meeting, but we, we thought it would be beneficial to this project, given all the discussions that have happened about um, affordable housing and wanting to take control of our, you know, destiny with affordable housing and pursue projects that the town has said we have, you know, decided that these are appropriate locations um, that we had a, we, we, we thought we, we ought to really try to, to, to get this going now. So any further questions? Ms. Mrs. Gonzalez, did you have a hand raised? I, I, I'm just in my thought process of trying to whittle this down. I mean, to hear that it wouldn't be a big deal to put it off and it might be something that would draw more of a crowd, um, that maybe we should put it off. Any other thoughts, Mr. O'Leary? Well, this particular neighborhood already has a, uh, a 40B project directly abutting this parcel. They've also, also encountered uh, rezoning right on Havel Street at the corner of Mount Vernon Street for multifamily dwelling. And, you know, so it, I would expect that the neighborhood would be interested in, uh, in the discussion and, um, might generate a little more attendance than uh, normally anticipated. I think there needs to be more, and again, it's difficult in this day and age, more public discussion as to specific locations for affordable housing as part of our plan here, so that we can get the feedback from the neighborhoods that are gonna be impacted or suggested impacts um, before we move forward. So. Again, I support affordable housing. I support the 
the idea that uh, we partner with people so that we know what we're getting and how, how many units we're going to have and how it's going to impact uh, um, the neighborhoods and the streets. And uh, I just think in light of uh, our meeting space and everything else, uh, this might help jam up the, the gymnasium. Right. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, you know, you know, I, I could go either way, but uh, I just think that this could generate a significant amount of uh, uh, attendance <clears throat> and discussion uh, to prolong. Even even if it isn't heavily attended, it'll have a lot of discussion. You know, what is our plan? What are we talking about? You know, what are, what is the proposals? And it's going to be a lot of what ifs. You know, well, we could do this, we could do that, and we could have, you know, depending upon what the, the consultant says to us, um, these are the possibilities, and maybe we'd be proposing something like this. Or are we going to put out an RFP with some guidelines in it uh, you know, to uh, better tailor you know, what would be more acceptable to the neighborhood. So we, uh, we have an awful lot of discussion to take place in relation to not just this specific uh, project, but other affordable housing projects throughout the community. So I, I think this may be one that I'd be in favor of maybe putting off till June and hopefully having more information available for Right. Public consumption and public discussion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Stuto, any comment? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Mr. O'Leary on all those points. Um, the biggest thing is I, I right now, whether this area would be the best for affordable housing, um, because of what's going on in other parts of town, I feel like it's it's become like a loaded discussion. And it's more that we need to have it, but I think this is going to, this alone could make the meeting a lot longer than anybody really wants to be. And then if we're inside, I mean, it could, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think this is just, this is something where you got to have confidence that you can have a full debate, giving everybody a chance who wants to speak to speak. And I, I don't know if that's something we're trying to invite right now based on the circumstances. Mr. Walner, any thoughts or comments? I don't have anything to add. I, I'm, I'm kind of still evaluating it, but I don't disagree with what uh, Vincenzo and Siebelberry said. Okay. Well, now I'll just add. I think we should let the let put it on, and we're already at Article 17 anyway. We didn't pare anything down. We should just let the let the people at the town meeting decide i think we should recommend that it be considered and let the town meeting decide i think i think i've heard about this since i've been on the board so it's not a new a not new location it's always been designated for that it was efforts to um, make it into elderly housing it's about time we step it up and do something for the elderly residents in this manner that's a low income the only, my only thought would be don't put 55, put 62, make it a legitimate elderly housing proposal. Um, and I would reword it, but I would let the, let the people in the town say what they want there. I mean, especially because we own it, it's already a real tangible piece of property. It's an opportunity and it's an opportunity to, to provide for people that have been telling us over and over and over and over and over again, we need more affordable housing so that people can live and reside here. So I would say to leave it on. I know I'm in the minority, but if we left the Article 16 on to let the people decide we're gonna spend $90,000 to study a street that's probably gonna be dug up with sewerage, hopefully sometime soon, then this one I think makes far more sense because this is, this has been designated, I don't know for how many decades, Mr. Gilberti, you can tell me that one. How many years has this land been designated for this purpose? I want to say it goes back to 2011 or 12 um, that this discussion began uh, with Mystic Valley Elder Services. So I think we should take any steps we can to make this this type of stuff happen because people in the town, they, they talk about this all the time. They even talked about this at the special town meeting over Madam Chair. the turkey farm. So. But what's it, so that's, that's my, my piece on the matter. Um, so Mr. Studo, do you have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Hayden would like to speak. For the oh, plate. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see. I don't see you, Mr. Hayden, but please. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so that property originally was school property. 
that was given back to the general government um, uh, more than 10 years ago. And then we've been talking about it since Mystic Valley came in looking for, you know, looking to uh, utilize some federal grants. And we helped get Cop and Drive put in there, which is the access to that. But you got to remember, this is not a 40B. This is going to be a development in there that's going to have setbacks that are not 10 feet from property lines. We're not going to stuff something down the neighborhood's throat. So we want to be able to figure out how many, how many um, units can be supported in the property and then help design something that will meld with the property, with, with, with the neighborhood. You know, the, the, the way we would like to see um, affordable housing done, not just build a whole bunch of houses, make 80% of them, 75% of them market rate, and then take 70% off market rate and, and have folks uh, move in there at still exorbitant uh, uh, numbers, you know, uh, cost numbers. So that's, that's my thought. That's, that's what we've been looking at for years, and it has been years. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Okay. Are we? Yeah. Um, thank you. That's a clarification on the affordable housing terms. It's not necessarily bad words. That's right. So, all right. Are we, do we have a motion? Do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Uh, Madam Chair, I recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, I move to recommend a town meeting. Article 17, conveyance of town-owned land for affordable housing development, three Carpenter Drive. Okay, Mr. Studo has a motion to recommend. Any second? Hearing none, motion fails. Do we have another motion? Uh, Anyone I else want to make a motion? Nobody. I move to uh, recommend removal of Article 17. Motion by Mr. O'Leary to remove Article 17. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Studo. Any further discussion? Hearing, seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Ms. Gonzalez, that was aye, right? Yes. Manupelli is no, so it's going to be removed. So one item removed from the article. So as it is written, do we have a motion? Our next motion, I think, is to vote to sign, right, Mr. Gilberto? Correct. So do we have a motion, Mr. Yep. Madam Chair, I move to sign the October town meeting warrant. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Here, seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Chair is aye. Okay, and now thank you all who were here to help explain those things. I thought that was a big help for us this evening. Next order of business is. The town um, administrator has his hands up, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was, I'm not. I'm going back and forth between the packet and the and the Brady Bunch grid here. So. <laughs> I'm doing the same, Madam Chair. <laughs> we have a second, I'm uh, sorry. That's okay. We do have a second motion that was in the uh, attachment that I emailed the board members at oh, seven o'clock, okay. and it's a motion to offer a recommendation on the uh, time, date, and location for the October town meeting. Um, that it the, that that it, the meeting be moved to October third, Saturday, October third, at eleven o'clock a.m. at one eighty nine Park Street. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. And I think when we discussed that previously, we were wanting you to check with Attorney Klein. Can we move it? We we know that the legislation allows thirty days continuance, but can we move it back the, back those two days? Correct. And that might be one of the reasons why you had him join in us. So it was. Thank you, okay. Madam. Thank you. Attorney Klein. Attorney Klein, did you 
Did you have anything input on that? Yeah, so, you know, we did review the special legislation and obviously there's no, you know, interpret, there's no precedent or, or official court interpretation of this, but we do think the, uh, the best way to read the legislation with your charter provision is you, you can continue the meeting and within that definition move it closer to two days, obviously, you know, provided you're giving the requisite notice, which you would, if the moderator decides to, obviously it'll be up to the moderator to do that by declaration. And we do think he has the authority uh, within the emergency legislation. Okay, thank you, Attorney Klein. And uh, Mr. Gilberto, anything else you want to add to that? I may. Yes, uh, the only thing I would add is if the vote, you know, the board does vote favorably, the uh, the moderator's next discussion would be with the Board of Health. I believe that they will be meeting on Thursday, September 10th. And as we did for the August meeting, we are timing to very quickly turn around giving the, the, the warrant to the printer um, that evening. Um, it would go out telling people in the mail that the meeting would be October 3rd, even though it would technically be the October 5th meeting. Um, and it would also include information regarding the warrant article, informational hearings um, that we've been holding before the meeting um, at, under your leadership uh, for uh, dealing with um, a more extensive back and forth and discussion. So we would, be, we, our plan is to get all of that out in the printed ver version of the warrant and in the mail and into the homes of our residents um, two weeks ahead of the Saturday meeting date and with a, about a week's notice ahead of the virtual warrant article hearing, which would be on September 28th. Okay. Mr. Murphy, do you want to add anything to that discussion? You're here. You're on mute though. Yeah. I I think if we look at the if we look at the calendar, um, you know, we don't have a lot of a lot of dates open based on um, elections and the commitments of the town clerk's office. And um, from the discussion we had last week as a group with Board of Health, um, Public Safety, Police and Fire, um, Mr. Coberto, I think it makes a lot of sense to try to get it done on October 3rd. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. All right, so do we have, do we have any other comment question? Do we have a motion? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend to the town moderator that the October annual town meeting scheduled for Monday, October 5th, 2020 be held on Saturday, October 3rd, 2020 at 11 a.m. at 189 Park Street. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Wong. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Are you, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And, and uh, Manu Pelli is aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay, our next order of business now is, now is the vote to sign the town meeting warrant. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank yes. you. Oh, you, you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for your input. Appreciate Thank you, Darren. Darren. You're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Thank you. Not, Madam Chair, through you, Darren, if you could hang for just a second. Um, so we've, I believe that the board just voted to sign the warrant and that was done purposely. We're asking the board to sign the warrant for the date that was called on the evening, um, at the hearing in January, the moderator then changing that date, um, basically after the fact, but before the printed warrant is set. So Vincenzo, I believe you read the first warrant to sign the warrant, the, uh, the first yes. motion to sign the warrant already, right? Yeah. So there shouldn't, I don't, and Darren, correct me if I've got that procedure wrong, but I think that's what we discussed. The, the warrant would be signed and then a recommendation made to change the date to October 3rd. Correct. You, you make a recommendation that the moderator, uh, that the moderator change the date to October 3rd. Okay, so we just did that, but when you print this warrant, aren't you printing 
the right date on it? The, the, the warrant. That's the whole purpose of, no, we're not. No, no, you're absolutely right. So by, by law, the warrant that will get printed will be dated October 5th, 2020, just like the, um, uh, the August warrant was actually dated May 11th, 2020. But That's what correct. we will do is we will put on the, on the front cover page uh, a note that tells the community that the meeting will be held October 3rd. And in parentheses, it will say um, continue scheduled from October 5th. Oh, I see. Okay. So we're, we're gonna, it, it's technically an October 5th meeting, but it will be held on October 3rd. And, and we, I think that that worked for the August meeting. I think that we had success with getting information to people, in my opinion. And so um, we're trying to structure the deadlines and the benchmarks of consulting with everybody accordingly to allow that to happen again. Yeah, we, the, we, we were looking at the, the best way to combine all the different notice deadlines, printer deadlines, charter provisions, and, and that's why we decided uh, this, was by, this was the easiest procedure. Madam Chair, through you, um, if it's possible for the board members to uh, plan to um, come to the town hall to sign the warrant on Thursday in the presence of the town clerk, that would be um, helpful and appreciated. Um, I would ordinarily ask you to come tomorrow to do so, but as you know, we have the preliminary election, the state primary taking place, and the clerk has got uh, some things to tend to on Wednesday, um, I believe related to that. Um, so um, if it's possible to have the board members to plan to come in on Thursday, that would be greatly appreciated. What time, well, anytime? I'm sorry, excuse me. Anytime, okay. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Gilbert, you can maybe just send an email to the members and let them know that's that's what you need, okay? Sure. Um, okay, so we're all set with the votes on the warrant and uh, vote to sign the October town meeting warrant. Yes, you you've so taken the vote. We're on to uh, the next order of business, which is to receive the rail trail update from the land utilization committee. Thank you, Attorney Klein. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of your meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, my understanding is that there was going to be a meeting of the Land Utilization Committee to discuss uh, the status of the bike trail um, between our last meeting and this evening, and I, I believe that happened a week and a half or so ago. Uh, Mr. Hertz, who is sort of the principal involved in the planning effort on the bike trail, is here this evening to provide an update. Um, there may be a desire on his part to provide a further update to the select board um, in executive session at a future meeting as well, but I, I think at least uh, an initial update uh, is what was uh, in the offering um, for this evening. Mr. Hertz, welcome. Thank you for sticking with us in this It did take a little longer uh, <laughs> than I had planned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, is it to, is, May I share my screen? I can set that, yep. Okay. Uh, share, okay. All right, can people see my screen? Yes. All right, so there's two things that I want to discuss tonight. One is to give you um, an update of where we are on the feasibility study. Um, uh, and and that's, that's important. But, but even more important um, is to discuss the next step. Um, as, as you well know, we, we, we were fortunate to get the, the approval of town meeting uh, almost two years ago now for the $55,000 for the feasibility study. Um, we, we were equally uh, blessed to get an additional $45,000 grant from the state in June um, for basically the next the next phase, um, we applied. I pl had applied for a grant a year and a half ago. Um, if we had gotten that in 2019, it probably it would have been used to offset the, the original feasibility study. Um, I applied for it again in 2020, and it came through. But most of the money, most of the work has already been done on the feasibility study. So it really needs to be used for the next phase of the project. And um, uh, I'd like to, before in, in today's presentation, I'd like to walk you through what we want to use that money for and get your buy-in uh, on that. Um, because really, 
and there's some urgency because that money needs to be used by the end of June 2021, um, or it, it just won't be it, it, it won't be available to us. Um, but let me walk you through um, the where we are on the feasibility study. So um, the, the 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 good news is is that the basic plan for the trail as it was envisioned back in 2017 when we started this, really hasn't changed. And the, the challenges and the benefits that we pictured back then are pretty much the same now as what we thought, thought they would be um, three years ago. The, the basic trail, the, the overall trail, um, uh, really starts over in Peabody. Um, we're, we're talking about buildings, we'll start in North Reading, but it's really about connectivity. We, we're looking at a trail that really would start where the Peabody Trail ends, which is here in, which is here in Peabody, the Independence Greenway in, in Peabody. Um, this is a paved trail, I'll show you, I can show you some. Um, here's the, the Peabody Trail, there's a picture of it. That's, that's the end of the Peabody Trail. It stops, it stops right uh, where Bostick is um, in, in, in Peabody. Um, and, and, and then it, 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 it's the old Salem to Lowell Railroad. Um, the Bostick plant is right there. Um, and then it, it, it crosses that the railroad bed crosses through Bostick, through, through property that's owned by uh, the Linfield Center Water District. Um, this is all Linfield Center Water District land. And then it crosses into North Reading, land, land that's owned by Danvers, right there. That property is owned by Danvers. Some land that's owned by a woman over, up, in, up in Andover, crosses in, into, into land that, that goes across a bunch of people's backyards, um, in, across some pri people's private yards uh, around Park Street, um, into Railroad Avenue, um, uh, across a, uh, some uh, uh, a property, uh, auto, auto body part shop, into Ipswich River Park, into some town, town land, uh, South Parish Park, North Parish Park rather, um, run, runs along Park Street um, and, uh, and, and in, into, 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 the, along, into the Masons, along the Masons land. Um, and then over over across 28, um, back by the um, across, uh, excuse me, I'm not going to 28 yet. Um, down down to Chestnut down to Chestnut Street, um, and then and then and then in, in, in along Martin's Brook, um, in across the swamp down to Chestnut down down to 28. Down, down by uh, the old, the old 28. Uh, the, down by the Stop and Shop Gas. Um, um, you can see, you can see where the rail. There's pieces of the old railroad bed um, in there. Um, ran across. I think it ran across what's 28 uh, at grade in the old days. Runs across behind um, where the the post office uh, processing center is. Um, back, uh, back where some the power lines are, um, runs runs along the power lines, and then you can see here you can see this line here where this this is the rail bed. Um, th this is North North Reading in here, and it runs and then it runs into Wilmington. Uh, this stretch the stretch of this North Reading in here. Um, North Reading has some. Um, Water, uh, some water pumping stations in here, and Wilmington has some North Reading pumping. It has some pumping stations in here. Um, now, the 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 uh, what, what the feasibility study has done, um, they've they've gone through and they've done detailed maps of of the whole length of the trail in North Reading. They've uh, we, they've walked almost all of it, and they've done detailed maps, topographic maps. These, these maps are not um, particularly easy to read on a computer screen. If I was, if we were all in a room together and we had, I could ro roll these out on big tables, they'd be a lot easier to read. So what, we're, what I'm showing you here is from the western edge, 
So, so this is this is Route 62 in Wilmington. So the the consultant um, is proposing to actually take the trail all the way to Wilmington. So they have a, you have a logical uh, parking area on a major street to start it. We, we've had discussions with the the town administrator in Wilmington and the DPW people in Wilmington. <laughs> And, and they're, they're quite open to, to letting it um, start in Wilmington. Um, this is the old rail bed in Wilmington. Um, the, the town of Wilmington owns the right of way to the, real, to the, to the rail bed. This is North Reading in uh, the rail bed in North Reading. North Reading has access to the, to the rail bed here. It, own, it owns access to the rail bed. Um, uh, it, 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 um, has access through Wilmington, it uses, uses the rail bed, in fact, to get to its, um, its, to its pumping stations. Um, this, this is actually not a particularly hard area to develop. I don't think this is gonna be a, a particularly problem area in, 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 in building, the, in building the, the trail. The trail then proceeds along what really is uh, pretty easy land. Then it goes into land that's owned um, by the, uh, the electric company. What's, what's interesting is the electric company um, has rules. Um, they won't let you uh, build a rail trail that runs parallel to, their, we're, uh, parallel to their lines, but they will allow you to run a, rail tra a, a bike trail that runs across their um, land. We originally thought that we would run it simply, there are, there are ATV tracks that run under their lines. So we thought the easiest way would be just to follow the ATV trails. Um, but since they won't let you uh, run them under the lines, we were, the, 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 now, the, now their trail is we're gonna cut across their, across their land and, and go into the post office. Um, we originally had heard that the post office is a very difficult organization to uh, negotiate with, but we we've had a, we had a couple conversations with people down in Washington, and um, they they basically said they have a process for doing these things, and we looked at we walked, we showed them the map, and they said yeah you know here's what you need to do um, it looks like if you, as long as you run it right along the edge of the property in an area of the land where they're really unlikely to ever want to expand the building, um, they probably can, we can probably do something for you. So the, we're, we're still reaching out to them, but it looks like as long as we cut across the power company's land and then go along the periphery of the post office land, it's, it's probably a, a, doable, a doable situation. Um, then of course we have it. You know, we have to get across Route 28, um, um, but you know it again. I think it's probably not. It's probably a doable thing. Um, probably crossing where the lights are for where you know the stop and shop gas station are is. But you know again that there's there's a number of different options um, uh, that still needs to be uh, figured out. Then on the other side of 28. Um, there, there's some public land that's actually owned by the uh, MBTA. Um, uh, that's not a, that's not a big that's not a big issue. Um, it gets in. It's, it's all kind of wet in here. Um, this area in here is all town-owned land, um, and then it gets into gets into some private loan land that we're going to need some easements. Um, but this is all very wet. This isn't particularly useful land to anyone. Um, uh, come come around um, and uh, and uh, this is Mas this this land in here is owned by the Masons. Um, we 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 met with the Masons and and they're very accommodating. They're um, they thought it was a great idea and and they're very open to giving free access to to, to the land back here. Um, and then it it would come 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 out around the Masons land. And then it would actually run along the public right of way along uh, along Park Street. The the railroad, in fact, ran right along Park Street there. It it, it, it historically it, um, it 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 ran 
ran right along the edge of the road. So it, it, it it's gonna, would run, the, the trail would run right along the edge of, of Park Street and then jog back back in. And, and, and this area here, just just uh, to the to the east of Chestnut Street, that this is all town owned land. Um, and that's the actual rail bed. You can you can see it if, when you're coming on Park Street or Chestnut Street, you can actually see the rail bed in there. This is this is all town owned land. You can, you, that's all town owned land. Um, uh, you, can, you can actually you can see in the map where the banner rail bed is. So I mean he's he's put he's put that in there. So this is now you're now you're in Ipswich River Park. So it's it's you know once you're in Ipswich River Park, it's you know we can do whatever we want in terms of running the trail. The trails are all sort of existing. Um, so um, so now at, when you get out of Ipswich River Park. Um, it, it gets a little bit complicated getting getting across Haverhill Street. Um, there, uh, there, there's an auto body shop here. Um, the, the thinking is the, the actual rail bed um, runs technically through the parking lot of the auto body shop, but there's probably a way around. There's some town owned land on the outside um, uh, uh, of the swamp, and there's probably a way around the auto body shop. It's still land that it, it needs needs to be worked out, but I, I think there's probably a way around it. Um, and then you're then you're on rail, railroad Avenue, um, and um, sort of going down railroad Avenue. Um, uh, there's some town owned land here, and there's some there's some there's some, there's some a, 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 we talked to some landowners in here, and there's some openness to doing some property swaps here, um, and then and then we get to probably to some of the more difficult areas, which is getting across Park Street here. Um, there's some there's there's some there's some tricky areas in land right around here on Park Street, um, and then um, uh, and then. This is probably the most difficult area is getting through Park Street. And then once once you get through Park Street, then we're back, we're back here behind Park Street, back into the area um, uh, where there's the abandoned rail bed. This area back up in here, this is the former Smith property. Um, and that, then we're back over into, um, into Linfield um, and, and going back towards Bostick and towards uh, and, and, and towards uh, uh, Peabody. So just just to give you just to give you an idea of um, what what some of this area looks like. So I, I, I showed you. So that's what you know. That's what that's what a, a rail bed rail trail looks like when it's actually all done. Um, you know that the uh, Peabody Peabody was uh, lucky. Because the Salem to Lowell Railroad um, was an active railroad as far as Bostick until about 1980. So the, 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 the railroad serviced, serviced that Bostick plant until about 1980. But the, rail, the railroad from Bostick all the way to Lowell stopped in, I think, the late 20s. It stopped almost 100 years ago. So that's why the property was all sold off uh, uh, west west of Middleton. Um, so you, you, you can see as you as you move you move west of 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 the rail bed. So this is what this is what that that the, the rail trail looks like the rail bed looks like as you go there's the Bostic plant and you can see the you can sort of see what the what the abandoned trails look like. So there are trails. Um, Mr. Hertz did I you know, I may have missed this and I, I'm I don't want to disrupt your presentation. Sure. You, is there a lot more of the the display that you have? And you may have mentioned this. And is this accessible online so that we can review it? Because I don't think it was part of our package. Um, I just looked again. No, I, I I mean this is a very large file. I I I I hadn't I hadn't sent it. It's a very large file. I can I can probably figure out some way of 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 uh, I can figure out some way of getting it to you. 
Okay. Um, did you have, was there, okay, I'm sorry. I, didn't I, I can to, speed it up. I, I can, the, the most important- I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I think the, the, it would be great. I can see what you're sharing and my colleagues can. It would be great to just have, if it's possible to have this so we can kind of sift through it in more detail and take a look at it. It's a lot of work that you put into this. Okay. Yeah, I have to figure out because it's a it's a very large file. Um, I'll, I'll I'll figure out with Mike a, a way of a, a way of getting it to you. Uh, it, 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 Probably it, it, Dropbox. Um, yeah, I can I I can figure I'll figure out some way of getting it to you. But what I I I I, um, I just wanted to give you an idea of showing you what the trail looks like. So so you know we have this beautiful these beautiful trails um, in, in the woods. I mean, this is, what, this is what's in North Reading right now that's just not accessible in North Reading. And, and e even, in, even, in the, even in the Smith property, this is what it looks like in, in Riverwood in the Smith property. So th the whole idea behind building these rail beds the, 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 the trails is to, is, to, is to make these these things accessible. So I know it's getting late. So I, I, what I what I want to discuss is 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 what to do with the forty five thousand um, dollars. So the the, the we, we have the forty five thousand dollars and for the project to move forward, you know, with the feasibility study is 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 is, is basically done. Um, the 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 next step for anything further to go forward. Originally, when I presented to town meeting, the uh, one of the ideas was we could focus on the North Reading um, the North Reading portion of the trail. Uh, and maybe not worry so much about the Linfield and uh, Middleton sections. No, we, we, it was always known that it was going to be difficult to cross Park Street um, because of the properties involved. Um, and that maybe we just focus more on, on the North Reading piece. The, the challenge came when we, we reached out to Mass DOT to find out uh, what the terms would be under which we would be eligible to receive the grants um, for, for, uh, for the rail trail. Given that it was going to be so expensive since so much of the trail is in wetlands and it, it could be four, five, six, seven million dollars to build it. And Mass DOT said that one of their primary considerations is connectivity um, that when they look they look at towns uh, that they, they're interested in towns connect the trails that connect to other towns so their primary consideration in giving North Reading funding for its trail would be connectivity to the to the Peabody Trail that if 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 the, it, it's not impossible but it would be very unlikely for North Reading to get any sizable funding for its trail as an orphan trail, for a, tr for a North Reading trail just, just sitting in North Reading without connectivity. And that it would be very important that when they go, when North Reading goes and applies for the grant, that it shows that it, the easements are all in place and that, th that, that, the, that the connections to Linfield and Middleton are sub not necessarily done, but the plans are well underway to having them done. So those so, easements are the thing, those are the things you wanted to talk with us in executive session about at another meeting? Uh, the, yes, the, the, the details on those easements. So the, the, the purpose of using the $45,000, we don't have to go into the details of the easements, but the purpose <clears> of the $45,000 is to hire attorneys and um, appraisers and to begin negotiations with the property owners to determine um, what it is that, that it might take to, to secure those easements. 
um, uh, regardless of regardless of how that happens, that those discussions need to take place. And I certainly don't. I, don't, I personally, I don't want to be the one doing those negotiations. That they need to be they need to be done at arm's length. And um, it was actually I, I actually originally I had a different thought on how to do the, what to use those forty five thousand dollars for. And and I was discussing it with Mike and 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 you know we talked about it and and it's really critical. There's, there is no project without those easements. Because there is, there's three, there's there's two absolutely critical easements, and really a third that that's that's pretty near critical. Um, there's a couple, there's there's a handful of others that I don't think are going to be a problem because they're so far from anybody's home that that and they're on wetlands that I just can't see as being any pretty problem. But there's there's two or three that that are absolutely essential. Um, that there won't be, there won't, that the project wouldn't happen without. So, so what I, what I want to, what I want to find out at this point is, is whether this makes sense to the board and whether I would have your support to use the $45,000, uh, because I, I would need town council or, or, or a council. I would need Mike's support on this. I would need to work with, closely with Mike. Um, on something like this. Okay. Any comments, questions for Mr. Hertz? Any thoughts? Any, any, I know it's getting late, but. I can just say to help people out, I've been following this project since it started and Phil and I have worked closely on it. So um, Phil is very thorough in his analysis and his recommendations are solid. And, you know, so, you know, I, I if we're trying to find efficiency of time, I, wouldn't be going down the path of does he know what he's talking about? <laughs> because I think he absolutely does. And I, I've ridden on the trails and I've seen him. So it's a good effort. Um, but we do need to have a, he does need to get our support um, or some other discussion, um, probably at an executive session where we can discuss this um, uh, more privately. And um, so he knows what to do with that money. It's, and again, it's, he's got a certain amount of timeline to be able to spend this money to make the project go forward. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Mrs. Gonzalez. You're mute. You're on mute. I just want to thank you. I think we're very lucky to have you. And I appreciate, I appreciate it. that. Thank you. Anybody else have some comments? <laughs> I do. I think Madam Chair froze up, though. So I'll take the liberty of uh, get, and Phil. Thank you very much for all that you're doing here. I know it's a, a labor of love for you, for sure. I'm sorry. I did. I apologize. Yeah. I, I, I could hear Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you, and then it stopped. So. But again, I know it's a labor of love for you, Phil, and in all the effort that you're putting into this is it, it's amazing. Uh, you know, this is uh, this was some people's ideas, and you're bringing it to fruition. And uh, to Rich's point, I mean, I know he's been following it very closely. You know, I trust your judgment. Uh, if you think this is what uh, uh, needs to be done and the best expenditure of funds is to move in that direction, then, you know, by all means, you know, I, I fully embrace your effort to uh, work with the town administration and the town administrator, town council to find out about those three critical pieces and uh, see if it can actually come to fruition. So, again, okay. thank you for all your efforts and uh, again, you're. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're a godsend at this point. I'll tell you right now, and you're pushing this thing yes, forward. Dude, oh, yeah, I just, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh no, since I, 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 th I think we will, we probably will need to talk in executive session because this yeah. could. Be... Okay, Mr. Studo, any questions, comments? Um, no, I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I mean, Mr. Hertz, you and I have never met or spoken, but this is it. It looks thorough, and I, I feel that. Um, Every community that has a bike trail seems to love it. Um, you know, I, you, I've used the Peabody. I grew up in Malden, so we used to go to the one that goes Arlington all the way to God knows how far north that one yeah. goes, I think. Right, yeah, so I think it's great. And, you know, there's <laughs> the land there just seems coordinating the land. So, yeah, no, thank you again for doing this. I know it's, um, you know, but one question I do have, how many, um, if completed the way you 
think it may be, and I know it could get changed. Uh, what would the length of that portion be, our portion, from the to Bloomington? Uh, be, well, the, the, the north, well, from the North Reading portion from the Wilmington line to the, to the Linfield line would be about four miles. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, but if the, it, it, it's almost endless. I mean, the, you, you're connecting, um, you know, it would, the railroad would go from, if you figure from Wilmington, it would go all the way to the Salem Harbor. Okay. And then, it, it goes all the way up almost to Newburyport. Um, and then it, it will go, I think it, you should be able to get almost to Boston. Okay. Cause I know, yeah, I know the, I know the one in Peabody ends at that playground school. No, yeah. I think it's just a playground. If you do the whole thing from Linfield line where you talked about Boston, that entrance. Yeah. Well, but, but they're built, they're putting a bridge over route one. Okay. They, they have the funding. Matter of fact, the same, the same engineering firm that did my feasibility study, they're, they're putting, they're building the bridge so that it, right now it stops at the playground, but it's going to actually continue right over <laughs> route one and then connect all the way to Salem. Okay. That'd be nice. So, so well, be able, be, anything else, Mr. Strudo? No, that's it. Thank you. All right. Okay, um, so I don't think it's on for a vote, but I think it's on for a vote of consensus of, I think you have a consensus of the unanimous consent of the board, at least to move it forward, right? Am I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but everyone's nodding. Okay. The, yeah, the, the, and so I guess working with Mr. Gilberto, if, if this does require an executive session, that would be we, we can set that up. I don't know how soon, but I know that this is a near and dear to you. So the sooner the better for that. We'd have to check with town council, which he's pretty readily available whenever we need him. Um, but he may put someone more specific on this. Um, because sometimes they do with the land use and planning items. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work with Mike. I mean, the most critical thing right now is to get the app, get this contract done with the state. So I'll, I'll do a draft, Mike, and I'll send it to you. And then you, we can, because I'll need to understand how it gets funded and all of that. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. That's great. Thank you, Phil. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so we are on to the next agenda item. Sorry, just let me get back to the syllabus here. And the next order of business is appointments for Martin's Pond Committee. And I think we talked about this one as well previously. So, Mr. Studo, are there motions? I mean, in a, in a previous meeting, we talked about filling this committee getting these appointments squared away from them, people that were interested in being on this committee. Mm -hmm. yep, there's a motion. All right. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following name for appointment as a member of the Martins Pond Committee for a term to expire on December 31st, 2022, Donald Skog. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Gonzalez and we'll hear from Mr. Walner. Mr. Wong, you're the liaison, right? Yeah, um, you know, I've met him. He's one of those people that's been fishing on the pond. I don't, I don't want to say daily, but on a fairly regular basis. He knows that pond almost better than anybody else I know. He, he knows what's going on. He knows the dynamics. And he's been working very well with the committee that exists because we have some people there who are very technical. It's a, it's a really, we're very fortunate to have him join the group. And he's a welcome addition to the group. And I strongly support him. Uh, being a member of it. Thank you, Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? Um, are we closing the nomination? We don't need to close nominations. Only one person, right, Mr. Gilberto? Correct. <laughs> On the nomination, it's a name, a name vote. So, Mr. Walner. I. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Don Scott. <laughs> Can you spell that? 
Spell that, Mr. Walner. I think it's S K O G, correct? S K O O G. Double double O. Skog. Okay, Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Skog. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Skog. Mr. Studo. Mr. Skog. And uh, Manu Pelli is Mr. Skog. All right, so that's great. Mr. Walner, do they have any other openings on that committee, or does that? Oh, they do. Mr. Gilberto is shaking his head. Okay. Any other openings, Mr. Gilberto? Two. Two. Okay. And those two will be re-advertised in October and November for our part of our annual appointment process. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right. Next order of business is the um, we're, uh, we're ratifying an integrated contract. Our next two orders of business actually have to do with the North Reading Administrative Staff and the North Reading Library Staff Association. And um, I'll, Mr. Gilberto, you can take it away, but um, because these were updated and all, you know, instead of memorandum of agreement, attached to a contract, attached to an amendment, attached to an addendum, these were all um, part of the, part of the agreement was to put them all into one integrated contract. So that, I that's think that's the next two items, I think that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It is. That's correct. There are no new uh, wage adjustments or benefit changes by virtue of this action, simply incorporating those documents as you referenced. Making one contract. So it's one easily referenced document. So Mr. Studer, do we have a motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to ratify and sign the integrated contract between the town of North Reading and the North Reading administrative staff for the period of July 1st, 2018 through Ju June 30th, 2021. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Ne <laughs> the next contract. The next, Mr. Studo, do we have a vote? Yes. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to ratify and sign the integrated contract between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Library Staff Association for the period of July 1st, 2018 through July 30th, 2021. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Okay, the next order of business is our discussing our meeting schedule and strategic planning meeting, which it's can't believe it's already been, it's already time to do this again. I, it's just this, this year has gone by in the blink of an eye. So um, we did schedule, I thought, our, at least our, our board meetings. Mr. Gilberto, where we would typically we would typically um, do this at the, we had it at the police station, but I'm assuming we're gonna do this virtually. Um, it depends upon the board's pleasure. I, I was sort of thinking that that would be the case, but um, depending upon where we're at with any of the restrictions or guidance, if the board elected to do so in person, um, it could. We could find a room large enough to accommodate everybody. Um, and, and promote social distancing. But I, I do think that if the board was open to it, we could also do it virtually. Okay. Does so. he, does, does, did it get delivered though? That's what I was gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> to each of homes? Yeah, well, you know what? You deserve it, for sure. <laughs> in quite a year. <laughs> I know. Um, so it, are there any um, proposed dates that you had in mind. I think we set up our meeting schedule, did, I believe, through December. We did, yes. The me those meeting dates are all set, and they are on page four of the main meeting packet. Um, customarily, the board has had this meeting usually uh, in the wake of the October town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it often, for whatever reason, it frequently ends up being a Wednesday or a Thursday night, but I don't, you know, I think the night can be determined based upon board member availability. So, you know, my suggestion would, would be to consider having the meeting uh, after the October town meeting. Okay, so town meeting is the fifth, moved back to the third. So what's the board's pleasure in terms of the day? Mrs. Gonzalez. 
Well, since we don't have to meet on the 5th, where we normally would have, that's open on the Monday night. Just a suggestion. Does that work for everybody? Which night is that? I'm sorry. The 5th. The 5th of October? Yeah, it's what would have been town meeting, so I already oh. have it in my schedule. Yeah. So the only thing would be, the only complication I see is if we can't do it on the 3rd, you know, would we be, would we still keep the 5th or would we push it out further? The, the, the request of the superintendent was that we not have it on a, a Monday through Thursday evening only because of the, the time required to sanitize afterwards. So I, I don't see a scenario where we would, where we would be recommending the meeting occur on Monday evening. You mean the town? I'm, I guess the thing is, town I'm talking about the town meeting, not, not our strategic plan. No, I'm sorry. It is getting late, so I'm getting a little confused. <laughs> okay, so we want to you we want to just earmark that date mr walner so would you would you be okay to earmark um, yeah, that's, that's fine no no problem yeah. i think that's a great idea we all we all had it we already had it booked anyway right. if that works for everyone does that work for you mr studo yes with a big asterisk <laughs> yes, oh I that's know. right he's having a baby i know i'll i'll, I'll figure it i mean i'll you know, as long as, uh, as long as I'm not at Beth Israel or, or, you know, in an ambulance, I think I can pull it off, <laughs> especially remotely. <laughs> yeah. Strategic planning and juggling. That's what you'll be doing. So. Correct. All right. Mr. Liru, does that work for you too? Sure. All right. That's great. Why don't we just keep that, keep that plugged in and we'll handle that. <clears throat> Okay, and that's actually, that is actually advertised as a, a regular meeting of the board, obviously, where members of the public attend, I think. Yep. You know, so will you tell us later date what, where and when, where, what the plan is for that, Michael, and we're keeping sure. it to that evening, so. Yeah, All right, that's great. Okay, and the town administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a note uh, that DPW has been informed by uh, the vendor who normally does our ha household, household hazardous waste day, that they're not offering the program during this calendar year. Um, DPW is looking into alternatives as well as a potential special drop-off day for rigid plastic, propane tanks, uh, as well as paper shredding. And then any information you can share once it becomes available uh, will be publicized in the community. I know there's some residents out there that have been asking about when that opportunity will come up. It, it looks like we won't be able to, to address, um, you know, paint and other chemicals, but hopefully some of the other um, special items that they, that, as they're denoted, can be um, can be disposed of. And we'll keep the community updated on our efforts on that. Um, as I mentioned at our meeting on Thursday evening, DPW and police are looking into a potential um, grant eligible construction project to add an accessible pathway on the west side of the middle high school property. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm informed today that the uh, area that they're zoning in on will be the end of Mead Street, where there is an existing uh, Mead Road, excuse me, Mead Road, um, where there's an existing cut through um, to the uh, property. So I know that they're sort of zeroing in on that as the uh, preferred location. Um, we'll be submitting a grant application um, that may not necessarily be contingent upon that specific project in case we run into any challenges, um, you know, with the design or with uh, outreach within the neighborhood. Uh, but that is the area that's being looked at for that project. Um, I'll also note, and I uploaded this to the packet, and I'm sure that the town clerk will be reporting to the local media. Uh, early voting uh, concluded on Friday at one o'clock. Friday did end up being our busiest day, even though it was um, one of the shorter days uh, with us closing at one o'clock. And there was a total turnout of 383 voters over the um, six days that early voting was held for the primary election. Um, that represents 3.32 percent. Um, election day is tomorrow and the polls will open at St. Teresa Church at 7 o'clock a.m. And finally, I know I did not offer anything in the COVID update, but I think it is important to note that um, there is an effort underway um, by Parks and Recreation to try to assemble some sort of a remote learning supervision program 
for um, North Reading um, public school students um, on the days that they are uh, in the remote learning schedule from the hybrid schedule. Um, there was a meeting that was held today with the superintendent of schools and with the representative of the school committee and Parks and Recreation. Um, you know, we continue to be optimistic we'll be able to pull something together, although finding the appropriate space has been a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Um, that work is uh, continuing, and as soon as there's something to report to the community, um, it will be publicized. So I probably should have talked about that earlier under the COVID update, and I apologize. And that concludes my report for this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Mrs. Gonzalez? What were the times? I know the time was changed for voting. Do you, do you know that offhand? Um, for the preliminary election, that, that, that time was not changed, 7 o'clock a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. It was oh. a town election that was changed. So tomorrow's till 8 p.m.? Tomorrow, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah, it was just the town election that was shortened. Okay. The state and federal are all set. Okay. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Now we're on to board member reports. Mr. Walner. I think I'll pass. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Gonzalez. You mean old and new business? I meant old and new business, yes. <laughs> no. I mean, it's kind of a second opportunity for board member reports. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gonzalez. No, I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary. A uh, question on Mill Street property. How are we doing? You know, I know it's getting lost in the shuffle here, but we've got an asset that we should be disposing of we've got a house sitting there that's vacant and uh, how are we doing and what's the timeline um so i'll need to check with the water superintendent on where the status is and i feel like that was the answer i had last time two weeks uh, two months ago when it came up but uh, i think it's something we should talk about and uh, probably talk about in our water waste water um because i think that we're pretty close to being able to round this out and issue a request for proposals to sell the property um, it's just a matter of us getting over that hump. Okay, and then um, what's being done to ensure um, timely processing of mail-in ballot applications and the ballot themselves for the November 3rd election? Uh, we've had lots of discussion over the last two or three weeks. Sure. And so there's a, there's a few, uh, few things that have, uh, that have taken place, um, one of which is, um, you know, we've redirected the incoming calls to the town clerk's office, which um, yeah, is substantial. Most people who are calling a town hall will, um, will, will dial the town clerk's office. So those calls are being filtered through, um, through my office right now where we have a bit of capacity to take them and that, that's helping with the call volume. Um, you know, for the past several weeks, um, probably four weeks now, we've had additional um, staffing that's been brought in um, in the form of election workers that the town clerk has uh, hired um, to help process elect, um, um, uh, ballots moving, um, moving through the early voting. And um, you know, we were able to think pretty quickly through the town clerk's office, catch up on the backlog of requests for um, ballots and get, uh, get them out over the course of the, the week, two weeks ago. Um, we did get some reports of you know, taking additional time for ballots to be delivered in the outgoing mail. Um, and the Secretary of State's office obviously encouraged people to consider returning them uh, in person to the extent possible. He happened to do so on the day we ex installed this uh, um, uh, dedicated drop-off box, which some of you have seen on Facebook or at the town hall, and it's gotten quite a bit of activity. Um, the town clerk has been moving through the ballots as they come in to enter them, and um, as I uh, understand it, they'll be run through um, the uh, machines on, uh, on election day tomorrow. Um, in order to, to do the tally um, once, uh, once the, the voting is ended. Um, so we've added some capacity. Um, the, the town clerk and I, you know, I think, have additional conversations that we'll have with regard to um, the November election and how to manage that, that workload. I think one advantage that we'll have um, is that we've gotten um, the cards were all due back in um, pretty early. So a lot of people jumped on the cards and sent them in. Um, to us. So th I think that component of people asking for the ballot will be reduced significantly, but there'll be a much higher turnout um, that we'll be dealing with in conjunction with that, along with the extended election period. So I think that's the update to the extent I can provide it right now. 
um, based on the past few weeks. Thanks. So, I know that the, um, you know, there's only so much that's within our control. I just want to ensure that what is within our control is handled, you know, efficiently and uh, process wise, you know, done on a little more timely basis than what was handled. Um, and, I, and I understand all the challenges that we're, that, that we're confronted with, but I think we could have done uh, a little bit better and I'm sure that we're going to be better prepared for November, but um, so I'll, I'll be checking in anyway, just to see how, what, what the processes are going to be going forward. Um, so Mill Street, but, um, again, uh, I just want to briefly address a comment that was made earlier in relation to me uh, promoting cons conspiracy theories last uh, last meeting. Um, I, I don't uh, I don't engage in conspiracy theories, you know. And the, there's no theory here; these are facts. And as far as uh, definitely, definitely not conspiracies, you know. There, there are people conspire. There are people conspiring, you know, to distract on the issues. To distract on the issues, yeah. to suppress votes, and um, <laughs> that's what you said. And ignore the facts. So uh, that being the the, the, the case, uh, I'm not I'm not uh, I do not engage in, cons in conspiracy theories, just well, in facts and uh, facts what's in front of our what's in front of our face. So we have a master of distraction, and uh, people oh, are aware of it. And why don't we talk vote. about? So then we're going to all right. Get, just encourage talk people talk to vote about. vote Let's tomorrow. Place. I'm encouraging people again to, to vote tomorrow and vote in November and um, if they're going to vote by mail you know get their ballots in early make sure that they're counted okay. that's all Other thank, that, you. Uh, thank you Mr. O'Leary thank you Miss okay now I have two hands raised Mrs. Gon Mrs. Gonzalez I'd just like to add that I have the utmost confidence in fiber stats that everything will run very smoothly and efficiently Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. Gilberto, did you, were you, did you have your hand raised? I, I actually was waving to North Reading police driving by and checking. Oh, okay, the right. <laughs> All right, checking to see what, who's in the building this late? Who could possibly be in there? <laughs> uh, Mr. Studo, anything? Nope. <laughs> nope. And I will just say, can I hear a motion to adjourn? <laughs> A motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn by Second Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Uh, Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Minupelli is aye. Thank you, folks. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day, night, whatever time it is, 11. Good night. Good night. <laughs>